retirement. For many people, retirement is a major life goal. For many people, they wish to retire early. In this video, I'm going to tell you how you can retire right now. Right now. Anyone can retire right now. Before we get into, into that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not. Leave a comment like my man Blanton. Every night in this channel, I go live. What's up, Luke? So it sounds like a gimmick. Even me almost threw up when I gave you that intro. Okay? But I'm not here to give you any gimmicks. Don, good to see you. Melbourne Beach, Florida. A lot of people will like to retire in Melbourne Beach, Florida. How can you retire now? I've asked myself that question. I'll be 40 years old this year. You say, okay, are you retired? Good to see you, Mecca. Well, let's examine what retirement means. Okay. For many people, they define retirement as making it to the age of Social Security, quitting their job so that they can live their retirement dream. Good to see you, Norma, my member. What is the retirement dream? I'm going to break down in three simple steps what retirement is so you can visualize it. Because retirement is not really tied to Social Security, Medicare, or anything else. It's tied to a lifestyle, which you can live right now. The number one thing people do when they retire is downsize. What age are you? Doesn't matter. You can downsize right now. Why would you wait until you're elderly, lower energy, less enthusiasm, more physical pain? Why would you wait to downsize? Now, maybe you can't sell the big house and go to a tiny, tiny house because maybe you still got kids, but can you downsize? Can you cut the square footage of your house? Can you cut the cars or the toys that you have and simplify your life? That's what retirement is. Even if you can afford it, retirement is cutting away the things that you've collected over a lifetime so that you can focus on a lifestyle of more simple enjoyment, more time with your grandchildren. Maybe if you retire right now, you can spend more time with your children. Now, maybe after two months of quarantine, you don't want to spend more time with your children. Many people, they, they want to work the rest of their life now. I want to retire right now. This is how you do it. You downsize. I downsized. I realized this at the age of 36, I sold my house and everything I owned, everything I spent 18 years collecting, started working at the age of 17. Now, I haven't stopped working. We're going to get to that. Retirement has very little to do with working versus a lifestyle. Many people look at retirement, I just want to stop working. Guys, retirement is, is doing certain things that you always look forward to doing. So the first thing you're going to do when you get retirement age, whatever it's going to be for you, is you're going to downsize. The next thing you're going to want to do is relocate. Don's in here from Melbourne Beach, Florida. It was my dream to relocate to Florida. So what did I do? I didn't retire and move to Florida. I downsized and relocated to Florida. What do you do when you retire? You downsize and you relocate. Why can't you relocate now? Many people now, after the coronavirus, they can work remotely. They can work from home. They've been working from home. Many people now can make a change in their life. They're getting unemployment benefits plus an extra $600 a week. They got a stimulus check too. If you're not going to relocate when you have the opportunity, when are you going to wait till you're 65? So why do people downsize and relocate? Because they want to redirect their time to do things they enjoy to live a lifestyle of retirement. If right now you at the age of 35, right now you at the age of 45, Norma's in here. I'm not going to ask her age. I try not to ask women their age. I know they get sensitive. I'm not going to ask some of you men your penis size either. I know you get sensitive. I don't know what your age is, but I can almost guarantee whether you're bland and just getting out of college. And I tell you right now, if you're single with no kids or if you're some ugly middle-aged person begging 
begging for someone on Match.com or Tinder to come come make love to you, stay single. Because when you're single, guys, you can retire. <laughs> you can cut this life you know, if you're retired. When you're single, you can move very quickly. Okay. You can downsize, you can relocate, and you can enjoy a lifestyle that only few can enjoy. Because if you're 65 and you're just making it down to Florida, are you surfing? No. Are you on spring break? No. You're you're gonna probably buy another house. You're 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 probably going to spend time in waiting for your grandchildren to children to come visit you. And before you know it, now you're 75. You're flirting with someone, your next door neighbor that's old as dirt, but you say, I don't want to die alone. Guys, a retired lifestyle is not a 55 and older community. A retired lifestyle is you living your best life right now, how you want to live it. So what you want to do to get there, how do you get to retirement now is one, you downsize. If you're young and you haven't acquired anything, slow down. Especially if you haven't acquired children, slow down. If you are crying on your bed after a breakup, you say, God, why me? I cried at 25. At 25, I was crying on my bed. I said, God, why you do this to me? I broke up with this girl. Guys, right now, you can give me that same girl at the age of 40, and I would return her quicker than a psychopath who cereal shops on Amazon.com. Why? Because what I found is... What I found is less is more, and that will get you to retirement right now. Downsize and relocate. Relocate is one of the hardest things, okay? Because humans are creatures of habit. Right now, you could be 22, like Blanton. Blanton's in his young 20s. You can have no debt. You know children. You, you know, you can relocate, but it's because we want to be close to family. It's because that we're familiar with our our surroundings the relocation is hard to do not because you're not retired it's because you are not willing to feel the pain of change if you're working remotely you can do those three steps right now and retire if you're unemployed you can you can downsize relocate and redirect your energy if you're married with children, why couldn't you downsize? Why couldn't you relocate? I, 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 um, I had a friend like two years ago. I don't know if they downsized. I think they missed that step. That's the first step. But they relocated from New Jersey to Florida. Okay. If you put some time and some effort into your life, you can live your retirement lifestyle. What, what does that mean to you? Does a retirement lifestyle mean collecting $1,400 a month? That's the average Social Security. $1,400 a month. And then after you figure out your money bag, where do you want to live? Because that's part of retirement. Why can't you move right now? Elon Musk got three companies Six kids, two marriages. He's thinking about relocating to Texas because of political reasons. Okay. But guys, you can move from California to Texas to Texas, California, from Oregon to New Jersey. If you don't know where you want to live, stay mobile, rent on a month to month basis. But to do that, you got to downsize first because you want to relocate. And the third thing you want to do is you want to redirect your time and your resources to living a life through daily habits that are enjoyable to you. What do you enjoy to do? Waiting for your grandkids to come visit you guys is going to be a painful part of life. Painful part of life. I'm not saying that's not a blessing, but I'm saying why can't you just enjoy life right now? Why can't you start on, this, on the road to downsize, relocate, and redirect your energy? What's prohibiting you from doing it right now? There's some people going through a divorce. They watch me. Now, they don't watch me once they get out of the divorce because they get divorced... They get out of the divorce, then they find some other chick at the gym, and they destroy their life again. And I love that. I love those guys. But guys, be careful. Okay, be careful. Many people watch my channel. They, they don't really want to live out of their car. They don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But they're going through a nasty divorce, and somehow I, I caught their ear. But then they get divorced, they start to heal, and they go back into the madness. Good to see you, uh, old gringo. Thank you for the membership. Guys, 
even if a divorce is very painful, it actually gives you an opportunity to start on an early retirement, not stop working. Notice in all the steps of retirement, nothing did I say about stop working. You said, well, Sam, that's my whole point. Guys, number one is just stopping, just to stop working does not get you to your best life. Because many people found that out in the past two months with the, with the uh, coronavirus lockdown. You have to downsize. If you got too much stuff in your life, you got too much anxiety, too much responsibility, you're not happy. You got to relocate, guys. Your environment matters. You know the difference between me in New Jersey and me in Florida. Okay. Now, we'll do what we have to do. Okay. If I got to come up here to visit my mom, I'll do it. But that's why I haven't committed to a home base because I like flexibility. I relocate like this. Okay. And because I'm downsized, because I have flexibility to relocate, I redirect my energy like this. I'm, I'm basically retired. I'm working two jobs. It should count as three, okay? Because sometimes I got to deal with psychopaths on YouTube. But also good people on YouTube. What do you want? See, retirement makes you ask, what do you want in life now that your life is over? Retirement, the basic retirement in America starts at around the age 62. That's when you can get your very first social security. It's gonna be it's gonna not be the top amount you can get. The top amount you can get is at the age of 70. You can't collect Medicaid, which is the healthcare program, until about 66. But let's just say you hit 62. The average life expectancy is 80. So let's say you can live on fourteen hundred dollars a month. Guys, that's what the average social security is. So, you know. Just because you stop working, does that make your life better? Even if you collect your social security, even if you got a little bit more and you got the money, what do you want to do? You're going to have to ask yourself that. Like if, let's just say you got the money back at 62 and you want to retire, you want to cash out. What are you going to do? You're going to downsize. I don't know anyone. There's, I'm sure there's exceptions. I don't know anyone that upsizes in their elderly life. They downsize. The next thing they do, a retire, they, they relocate. Whether they want to move to Florida, the mountains of Utah, or they want to travel. They want to be a nomad. They want to explore. They want to see what they didn't see. Either way, put that in the relocation category. You can do those things right now, whether you're working or not working. That's true. And the third thing is part of retirement lifestyle is you redirect your time. What do you want to do? You want to go for a hike? Well, guess what, guys? After you downsized and after you relocated, you got time to go for a hike. What do you want to do? Do you want to masturbate in a sock? Well, guess what, guys? After you downsize, after you relocate, you can do that. What do you want to do? You want to visit your grandchildren? Guess what, guys? After you downsize, after you relocate, you can do that right now. You can do what you want right now if you do things in order. What's the order of retirement? Downsize, relocate, redirect your energy. Three steps. None of, the, none of them necessarily include stop working. You can put that in a separate life goal, a separate financial life goal. Blanton likes to talk finances. I tell every young person, don't get married or have children until at least you're in your 30s. Your hormones, your immaturity. Damn it, old gringo's a member in a $5 super chat. As a He's about to spit wisdom. As a 57-year-old who has lost everything, I'm sorry to hear that, and had to start all over, it's not the end of the world. There you go. I just have different goals now. Perfect comment. Great job. When you realize that you have nothing to lose, you can overcome the fear of losing everything. Now, sometimes I have felt, and I could still feel that one of my biggest fears is losing, you know, not having anything. Then I strip my life. I don't have anything intentionally. And it gives you more confidence to do things like, what do I have to lose? Steve Jobs said on his deathbed right before he died, like, you know, a couple months before he died, he said, you can't implement real change until you realize you are already naked. What does that mean? It means the same thing that old Gringo just said. When you realize that even if you lose everything, it's not the end of the world. You know, you could just redirect your life. I thought I could never live without smoking cigarettes. I started smoking cigarettes at the age of 12. I didn't stop till around 27. And one of the reasons I didn't stop before 27, because I thought I, I wouldn't enjoy life without coffee and a cigarette. I wouldn't enjoy life without a, a Corona, a beer, and, and a, a cigarette. 
But guys, you put a cigarette around me now and it makes me sick to my stomach. I cried on my bed at the age of 25 over a breakup. You put that girl in front of me now. Guys, I would act like I didn't even know her. Why? Because your goals can change. The thing you think you can't live without, you one day will realize you can live without. You can change. And it's not the end of the world. I have family members that never worked. Guys, they, they, they get uh, about eight to $1,200 a month. They get food stamps and they got a, a stimulus check. Guys, in America, you're never going to starve to death. I did a whole video and I've worked my whole life, never collected any government assistance. But I've also come to the point where I don't care if people are scamming the system, whether it's on a low income welfare or corporate welfare, because what I realize is everyone's scamming. So I used to be real stringent with that because I've always worked and I've never collected like any type of social program. But then when I saw the corporate socialism, what I say is, Sam, I'm thankful for America. I'm not going to get involved in that nonsense. Let everyone, whoever wants to do it, that's on them. Okay. Cause we print money, whether it's digital or printed money, we just, the Fed will pump money into the stock market, they'll buy junk bonds, don't matter. So I don't, I don't waste my energy on the debate of, oh, is this person really disabled? Oh, is this corporation really sheltering their tax code? Guys, I don't care. I don't care anymore. I'm not wasting energy. What I care about is downsizing, relocating, and living my best life. I care that the beaches in Palm Beach County are open. Okay. But guess what, guys? If you're in, uh, where the fuck am I, Wisconsin, do you know that the beaches in Palm Beach are open? No. You're in Wisconsin waiting for Brett Favre to come back. Guys, Brett Favre retired and relocated. Okay. So your best life does not mean you're in your 60s collecting Social Security. Your best life means that you have figured out at any time right now, you can downsize, that's number one, relocate, that's number two, and redirect your energy, that's number three. That's retirement. That's the structured topic tonight. We're going to read all the live comments like we do every night. Subscribe if you're not. Click that blue join button if you haven't. Thank you, old Gringo, for the super chat. I'm going to take my sweatshirt off. I'm hot, sweaty, and I feel that message tonight. Love to you guys. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you. Guys, I, I, I hope you guys got that wisdom tonight. I hope you did. I think it's good. I thought about it today. It really changed my life. Well, I already changed my life, but it inspired me, man. It inspired Thank you guys for leaving the live comments. Thank you for watching. Appreciate you. And we're going to go all live comments. Retire now. Start living your best life now. Don't wait for a signal. Don't wait for a signal, guys. You'll be waiting your whole life. All right. Let's start from the top. Um, Bland. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Luke, what's up, man? What's up, man? Positive vibes to you. Love to you, man. Shout out to everyone in a hybrid vehicle. Don, love to you, man. Again, love to Melbourne. Mecca, love to you. I appreciate all the comments you're leaving on my videos. Blaine, I'm trying to retire, be financially free, not necessarily stop working by 45. Well, Blaine, I don't even think you're 25 yet. You got no kids. You got no mortgage. I don't think you have any debt. I've watched your videos. You're already retired. So what's your job now? Blaine, you're already retired. What's your job now? Your job is to, I think you're already downsized. Don't acquire too much. That's your job. Because if you haven't acquired, and, and you still have to always remember rule number one of retirement, which is downsize, which means less is more. Okay. Number two is you got to relocate, Blanton. Because you, you, you went to college in North Carolina. I don't know if you grew up there. You, then you went down to South Carolina for a job. You've only been to the Carolinas. You got to travel a little bit, maybe. Unless you know that North Carolina right now is for you. But don't buy a house yet. Because I don't, I don't think until you're in your 30s, you know kind of where, where your vibe is, in my opinion, in my experience. Keep your commitments light. But your third thing is you got to find, you know, find your passion. But you're finding your passion through doing stuff, okay? One day you do a video about energy drinks. Next day you do a video about financial budgeting. So part of being young is, is doing, figuring out, and refining. But if you can keep your commitments low, not get tied into 30-year mortgages or too many children or too many relationships, when you wake up in your middle age, you're going to say, shit, I'm, I'm retired now. And so, Blaine, you're on that right road. Stay positive. Norma, what's up, Sam? Good to see you. Shout out to Norma. Norma's retired. Norma, I just, I, just, I just said it right now. You're retired. You say, Sam, how's Norma retired? 
Norma is a retired massage therapist. Okay. She recently relocated from Georgia to Maryland to visit her family like I did. Now, she may relocate back to um, Georgia because she's, I believe, is a nomad. So relocation doesn't mean you have to pick a place where you're going to build a house. I know plenty of people that got divorced and then got seduced into buying another house, renovating it how they wanted to, just to say, now I have my own. No, 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 no. That's not what relocating means. There's a, I've always told you guys, relocation means finding the environment that inspires you. What's the environment? The environment is not home decor. The environment is climate, the temperature, the climate, and the culture. What do you like? The people, the vibe. The things you see. The, the, the difference between a palm tree and a pine tree is night and day. The difference between four seasons and endless summer is night and day. So, you know, it takes time to figure out what environment you, you, you come alive in, okay? And again, if you are the type of person where you're creative, you're, you, you know, you like adventure, then don't commit to any one land. Keep your commitments low. Short-term rentals. Nomad life, RV life, what is it? Oh, uh, let's continue to read. Luke. Um, oh, but I was saying, it. look, Norma's retired. She's living a dream. Luke, how are you and what's new? Uh, I'm making the most of it. The weather up north is getting better. Uh, and being that I don't have a fully self-contained RV with heating and air conditioning, the best way to supplement that is to if you're to be a true nomad, which means to travel up north in the in the summer, travel back down south in the winter. Now, why do I not tend to just do that every year, no matter what? Because I like the culture a little bit better in Florida. The only time I really like to travel up north is if there's a hurricane. We just got, we're just getting out of this pandemic. Now, some people say we're totally out of the pandemic. Uh, that, that's basically the, right now, now that may change tomorrow. Today, they basically said, they're basically saying, look, the pandemic's over. Now, I also found out today, Trump is taking hydroxychloroquine and he said, I thought he had to, I don't know what's going on. It's crazy. But I, again, I'm not going to start debating. I don't get too wrapped up in the politics. I speak my mind so you guys know where I stand because I don't want to mislead you guys. And then you, you get mad at me. You find out like 10 videos later, like I, I have this philosophy on life. But the bottom line is I'm not a political junkie. So what's going on is it, like when I was, when I was going through my daily, did I think about hydroxychloroquine? No. <laughs> yeah, I was still thinking about the Latino porn I watched from last night. No, that's true. But I went for a walk. Okay. I felt inspired to do what I had to do for work. Self-care is the ultimate calling on your life. When you're retired, do you stop self-care? No. The minute you stop self-care, you have to check yourself in to adult daycare. I've delivered and I've seen people in senior citizen care facilities. Right now, it's the hottest spot for a coronavirus. Now, sometimes our age just gets us there. We can't help it. It can happen to any of us, myself included. But the more self-care you do, the higher chances you have of not having to have someone else take care of you. So that's kind of my mindset today. Uh, you're excited about getting ready for Florida in the near, near future? Florida is either going to happen in a couple weeks or a few months. But I can relocate like this. Like I was thinking maybe Memorial Day weekend next week or this week or whatever, I go down to Florida and I'll come back up here. I can change anytime. Okay. Have I retired from work? No. Am I collecting Social Security? No. Guys, number one, okay, most people are working remote right now. Okay. Now, if you're not working remote, then you're probably laid off. There are some people that are working stationary, but not most of society right now. So what's stopping anyone from relocating? Well, if they, they haven't downsized yet. If you haven't down, downsizing is the biggest burden in your life. And that's why it's step number one to retiring right now. Whether you're 22, 42, or like my man, old gringo, 57, starting all over, but he's inspired again. He's got his juices flowing again. And I like that because that's what retirement is. Getting excited. Going, oh, shit, I'm about to do something. Okay. And it doesn't have to be. You won't find out what you want to do until you simplify your life. And that's step one of retirement, downsize. Step two is relocate. You got to get an environment that makes you happy. Now, for old gringo, that may be in Texas. I don't know. Maybe in Arizona. I don't know. That's a self-discovery journey that all of us have to go on ourselves. 
We share, we connect, but all of us are on our own journey. You got to be yourself, man. Now, every time I'm tempted to pander to the crowd, because once in a while I said, let me pander. I get a little bit more people. Because when I'm a little bit softer, sometimes I don't rub people the wrong way. And I don't like to rub people the wrong way. I don't get into But I have to balance it with if I can't be myself, then life's not, then YouTube's not worth having. Okay. Life is almost not worth living. I hate to say it like that. But if you can't be yourself, I mean, and I'm not talking about like talking nasty to people or hurting people. Okay. And, you know, a couple times even me, like, I, you know, I, we could all cross the line. But being yourself is being able to express yourself without hurting others in a way that makes you feel good. Now, you say, Sam, sometimes I've heard you, you know, curse some people off on YouTube. Well, guys, look, you know, come on. I mean, you guys know what you're getting. I mean, this is who I am. I don't want you to stay if it's not good for you. But never stay in a relationship where you can't be yourself. Every time you want to say something, you can't say something. I had that relationship even with my father. Now, it doesn't have to be a lover. I saw someone called up Dave Ramsey today. So my father... My father's emotionally abusing me. What should I do? Young, 22-year-old girl, her father was paying for college. Anytime your parents pay for something, you're on the hook to them. It shouldn't be like that, but that's how it is. So what should you do to gain your independence? You got to work. If you don't work, guess what? Your dreams don't work. If you don't work, your dreams don't work. You damn sure ain't going to retire. See, that's what made people get caught. Even I got seduced into that a little bit. At one point in life, you think, well, retirement is just stop working. But you haven't figured out life yet, if you think like that. And there's nothing wrong if you want to stop working. Look, guys, I would like to be financially independent. It's one of my last goals. Right now, I'm working two jobs. <laughs> and when I do DoorDash, I'm on three jobs. Okay. I'm not scared to work. Never have been. Okay. And that's why I have my independence. That and the health and the grace of God. But you don't need to work a job you hate. I told you guys, you simplify your life, you downsize, you could you could do door dash and get by. But you know, again, everyone's different. But what I'm trying to tell you is retirement, just like home buying, just like being in a relationship, is a little bit of a society plug-in standard that you think it's something other than what it is. Like you think the American dream is buying a house until you own a house. Okay. I owned a house for 15 years. I know you get tired of me saying that. Some of you people don't watch, but guys, it's like, it's like, you know, when you say how long you've been married. So I've been married 10 years. Okay. And sometimes they just tell you how long they're married. Just say, look, I'm still here. I'm still doing it. I'm not happy, but I'm doing it. <laughs> Guy, right, let's take a Uh, let's continue. Uh, Luke was saying, Florida near future. I feel the best way. I, I feel the best way is to play the rich games that elite use, use debt like the rich. I disagree. I do agree that the rich use debt and they leverage it, but guys, they have a lot of relationships and they know how to play the game and that takes a lot. Guys, why did, why is Elon Musk lose his mind sometimes? Okay, Trump called him a genius, but I told you, it's a thin line between a genius and a psychopath. Elon Musk said that he almost checked himself into the mental hospital when he was young. His mind never stops working. There's a reason he just had a six kid on Sunday and he went back to work on Monday. He doesn't know, uh, retirement, Donald Trump don't want to retire. He said, he said, if you give me two weeks off, I lose my mind. That's why he wants to be, a, he didn't have to be the president. He likes the action. Okay. So, but I don't get caught into the elites, the this, the that. They're, you know, guys, look, overall, to be fair, America is still a great place to live life, to have opportunity, but you have to be intentional. Okay. I think there should be some basic reforms to balance the system out a little bit, but I always tell you guys, even with the reforms, you still have to do some work of your life. Okay, there's never going to be a system where you don't have to push yourself out of bed. There's never going to be a system where you don't have to get your big ass out of the seat and go for a walk. There's never going to be a system where you don't have to cut out an unhealthy relationship. There's never going to be a system where you don't have to find out what is your best life and then go after it. Guys, you, who do you, it doesn't matter if you believe in Nancy Pelosi or Donald Trump. None of them have the answer to your life. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you know, get involved, vote, do whatever you want. But your retirement life, which is basically saying your dream life, is on your journey of self-discovery through downsizing, through relocating, and through redirecting your energy to things that you find important. You can do that right now. Many people don't like to hear that because then... well. 
then, then it's on me. Guys, it is on you a little bit at a certain point. You're never going to starve in America. I have family members that never worked and they never lacked for food a day in their life. And some of them drug addicts. Even drug addicts don't lack for food in America. That's true. So once you get past the fear of failure, because it's part of life, now you can focus on your life, which is downsize, relocate, redirect your energy. Once you've done that, then you can add stuff to your life. You want to add? Add. But you can't add before you subtract. You, you can't add new sheetrock until you tear down the old sheetrock. You know, like you say, I want to do a run I want to add something to my house. Well, sometimes to add something, I destroy something. I take away something. And that's why downsizing is the first step. To clear your mind, to clear your focus, to clear the palette, to paint your new masterpiece. All right, let's continue. Luke, an investment income producing asset. I lost the most money in my life trying to make more money. I am not, in get, I'm not against investments. I, I don't tell people what to do with their money, but I, I'm honest with you. Most people, maybe not all, but most people, and I know some people, including me, have lost more money in investments than made. Statistically, that is fact. Most businesses fail. Most people lose money in the stock market, not make, especially if you're short-term trading. Most people, even if they're index fund trading, they take out when things get crazy. There's, I'm guaranteed there's, they even, the statistics show that when the coronavirus hit, many, there was a, billions of dollars that came out of index funds went into uh, money markets and they never went back and they'll never go back. And I'm not saying they should go back. I, I, I'm just saying, that's you, you, everyone wants to figure that out. I'm just trying to tell you that whether it's a rental property, whether it's an index fund, whatever, that's fine if it's in your risk category. Okay. And that's part of redirecting your energy. That's step number three. Okay. Because investments should be treated like dessert. Okay. If you depend solely on an investment to feed yourself, you're gonna have you're gonna have a mental breakdown. There when have I had a mental breakdown during breakups and during bad investments? You say, Sam, I've had a sound mind, but I feel like I'm losing my mind. Well, I can point it to two things, a breakup or bad investments. Most people that self-induce stress and mental pain, it's two things, bad relationships and bad investments, period. Don't overcomplicate life, that's it. So let's continue. Uh, Luke, out of all that I invested into eBay, have made over a thousand percent return on my investment and that's after taxes product cost for eBay. It's so crazy. Apartments in Carolina average around a thousand to twelve fifty a month for a decent one and two bedroom apartment. That's crazy because I'm in South Florida. I can get a nice alimony, same price, maybe a little more. Twelve hundred dollars per month is the average rent in America. Period. South Florida, the nice spots will be higher, especially closer to the beach. But you could definitely find a decent place for twelve hundred dollars a month as a single person living a downsized life. Well, what are you going to do when you get to Florida? Okay, so you downsize, you relocate to Florida, then your third step will be redirect your energy. You say, Sam, I don't know what I want to do when I get to Florida. That's okay. Why? Because faith is taking the first step without seeing the entire staircase. Okay. You have to do the research, you have to plan, and you should never relocate to a place long-term commitment until you visited that place. Okay. Now, if you haven't visited, but you want to just take a leap in faith and you've done some research, then short-term commit. Don't long-term commit. Okay, That way you keep your flexibility. All right, let's continue. Carlos, what's up, brother? Great to see you. Shout out to South Florida. He's from uh, Miami area. Good to see you, Sam. It's great to see a palm tree emoji. Big difference between a palm tree and a pine tree. Guys, if you're watching, click that thumbs up. Appreciate you. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Thank you to all my members who clicked that blue join button, Norma. Uh, my man, old gringo just joined today. I appreciate that. Um, chat's packed tonight, man. Good to see all you people, man. Thank you. Now let's continue. Norma, I'm not getting unemployment anymore since Georgia reopened and I didn't start doing massage yet, but that's okay because I'm in a decent position. I'm nowhere near retirement age, just an old soul. Well, let me, I'm curious about that, Norma, because if you collect unemployment, even though a state reopens, 
you should still, I don't know, you should still be able to collect unemployment. The only time you couldn't collect unemployment is if you're working. You know, once you go on unemployment, the only way you lose your unemployment is if it runs out or if you go back to work. I don't know if there's a different thing with the coronavirus, but in my experience, you can't lose your unemployment. It's an insurance policy. You put every paycheck that you make, whether you're self-employed or whether you're employed by someone else, you pay taxes. Out of your taxes is unemployment insurance. It's not a grant. It's insurance. Okay. You pay for it out of your taxes. Okay. Called payroll tax. Okay. So you are able to incl- collect that insurance policy as long as you don't, you know, you don't have other income coming in because then technically you're not unemployed or you've gone back to work. Other than that, the only unemployment usually lasts around six months. It takes four to six months to find a job. So Norma, uh, let me know about that. Interesting. Mecca laughing good. Rick, when will you do a video about day trading experience? Good question. I've been waiting to do it because I haven't fully figured out all the lessons I, and I will, but I don't want to make videos that try to give people answers that I don't have. Um, I do think there'll be some value in just talking about my failures. Um, so I, I will look into that. And I thank you for that question. I think, again, I want to repeat that you will destroy your mental health with two things, basically. Bad relationships and bad investments. And day trading destroys your mental health. It's not bad, though. I'm not saying I would never do it. I'm just saying it has to be in a low percentage of your net worth. You have to have other income. You have to have a a 12-month emergency fund. And you need to have a stability in your life. If you're day trading with kids, with family, with debt, you're going to destroy your life. You know, I almost destroyed my, my, my sanity doing it by myself. You know what I mean? So I'm not against it, though. But it's a very dangerous thing. I try to balance my thoughts around it because I don't want to discourage people that that's their dream. Because, uh, again, I'm not saying I would never do it. But it's uh, something that I will make a mental note and talk about. Uh, Luke, I can honestly say from my experience to anyone, so not stay in an area because of family because they will not stop their life because of you. Amen. I thank God that I retired early three years ago, still working. I'm not talking about stop working. I sold my house. I downsized. I relocated to Florida for the past three years, basically. I've been in Florida for the majority of the years. I come up here on occasion if there's an emergency or to see my mom. But if I would have waited, I lost three years of my life, three years of my retirement, three years of my health, of my prime energy, walking up and down the beaches, go, uh, partying on, on spring break. Guys, I was in South Florida on spring break when Trump announced a national emergency. Okay. I thank God that I was there rather than in New Jersey in 20 degree weather looking at some girl coming out of shop right with dirty pajamas stacking up on DiGiorno pizza. Don't waste your life waiting for retirement. Start retirement now through downsize, relocate, and redirect your energy. You may or may not have to work longer or less. I don't, you know, everyone's got to figure out their own budget. The budget and the finances is a separate video, okay? But every part of retirement life you can do right now. You say, Sam, I got I got two kids. I got a house. I can't downsize. Whoa, whoa. What's, what size is your house? Are you renting or are you buying? If you're renting... And you got a 1,500 square foot house with three people in that house, you can downsize now. What type of car you got? You got a BMW? Why, why couldn't you drive a Jeep? So a downsizing don't mean sell everything and live out of your car. Now, if you're single, guys, if you, get, if you went through a divorce, what do you got to lose? Like old gringo said, make it happen. Okay. Once you realize, like, you know, I ain't got nothing to lose, go for it. That's a good thing. Uh, Luke, biggest lesson I learned. Love to you, brother. I appreciate that. Yeah, you can't stay in, in, in the same area for someone else. You'll be resentful. Norma, I'm ready to relocate and DoorDash for now. That's what I'm talking about. She got a red card. Been going back and forth with DoorDash. Make it happen. It's scary. I was in South Florida 
okay? Always do something when you don't have to do. DoorDash now, even if you don't have to. At least get a couple under your belt for experience. Start your side hustle when you don't have to hustle. That way you have more peace, more buffer. So, I don't know what it was, probably two years ago. DoorDash had just came out. And I saw some other person living in their car on YouTube talk about DoorDash. And they're a little bit of a scam artist. But I tell you, even with people that you feel are a scam artist, or you feel like they're a pastor that manipulates people, you can learn from anyone. Because I've learned from some pastors that are crooked, and I've learned some from people like, I know they're, it's a sales pitch. So, but I always keep my ears open. There's a scripture that says, take the good out of some, someone and leave the bad. Same thing with me. I know a lot of people don't like a lot of stuff I said, but hey guys, look, do you don't have to worship me. I'm not asking anyone to worship me. Okay, Guys, I block more people than, you know, again, I, I could, my YouTube channel would be way bigger. Okay? But that's by the grace of God. What I, what I tell you is a wholesome message. There's nothing in my three steps to retirement that is evil. Okay, Downsize, relocate, and redirect your energy. Nowhere in there is hurt, manipulate, or cause damage. Okay, You can do those things responsibly with a little bit of thought. The DoorDash story. Guys, I had to do it. Doers make mistakes. I was sitting there. I said, well, I really don't need the DoorDash, but I like the idea. Why did I like DoorDash? Number one is I love the app interface. The app interface is simple, clean, and inspiring. It's almost like a game. Better than Uber Eats, better than Instacart. So I saw that. I watched videos, I researched, and I love the idea that you could work from anywhere. So if you get laid off tomorrow, you have income tomorrow. I like that. That's, that's, that you can retire right now. Guys, I know people living off DoorDash, they're hustling, but they live wherever they want. Damn it. This is a lot. Guys, America ain't that bad. And I, I talk about reform and some people hate me, but you know, come on guys. So I was sitting there in South Florida two years ago. I didn't have to DoorDash. I watched some videos. I was getting inspired and I love independence. That, I, that's why I always wanted to start working. I listened again to that video call today on Dave Ramsey's show. A 22 year old girl said, I got an emotionally abusive father. He's paying for my college though. I can't speak up, but she refused to work. If you don't work, your dreams don't work. I cut my father out of my life. I cut out a $300,000 inheritance because I was willing to work. I didn't need him. Okay. But you, you can't, yo, guys, you can't cut people out if you're not willing to do what you got to do for you. So bottom line though, I'm looking at the door desk because I look at it as another way to ensure a level of my independence. I like independence, okay? And I'm not talking about Independence Day. I'm talking about like just living life on my terms, okay? So I downloaded the app. I applied for the company card and the company bag. I got it in about a week. I got a whole playlist on my channel called DoorDash. Check it out. It, it's step by step. So I said, let me do DoorDash in steps. Everything you do, you got to break down the steps and then you got to take it one step at a time. That's how you get to your goal. Your goal doesn't come by watching one video. It just comes by breaking it, breaking down the lesson in the steps. How do you do DoorDash? Step number one, watch videos, see what it's about. Step number two, if you're interested, apply to clear the background check, to get your company card and to get a bag. So that you can get in the system and you can start dashing immediately. Then step number three is not to sit there and look at your card and look at your bag. Step number three is to dash now. I hit dash now. I was like, I was like, I was like this. Guys, I've worked a lot of different jobs in my life. DoorDash had me shook. I'm like this. I'm looking at DoorDash like this scared as hell. Okay. And, and, and it was amazing because as soon as I hit dash now, an order came up like this. What is the best time to DoorDash? 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. So I hit DoorDash around 6 p.m. in South Florida. I was looking at it. And so I like, ding, 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 ding. I, I like this. And I didn't know what the hell it said. I didn't know if it said you need a red card, you don't need a red card. I didn't know where it was going. I didn't know any of the restaurants in the area. You know what? I got to say, except, except. I said, I'm in now. Okay. And then I hit go. And I just figured it out. <laughs> now, again, I did some research. I had some idea, but... Guys, it's scary as hell. Now, my first one went good. A couple of them went bad. It's very mentally damaging when you get your first negative review, but I deserved it because I didn't check some items. Some negative reviews you get, you don't, you don't deserve. You, you give and take. 
But I want to show you whether it's retirement, DoorDash, or anything you want in your life. Or how do you get through a divorce? You break it down to the steps. You realize the marriage ain't going to work. Okay, what's step number one? Step number one is you got to get a divorce lawyer. You got to talk it out. You got to break down the settlement. Then you got to do it. You got to follow the papers. And then you got to re-pick up, you gotta pick up the pieces. Okay. But when you pick up the pieces, don't pick up extra pieces. Why? Because downsize is the first step to retirement. Don't, if you get divorced, if you go through a breakup and you have an opportunity to reset your life, don't take any unnecessary baggage. I wish I could tattoo this lesson on your forehead. The key to a clarity, the key to a peace of mind, the key to mental health is not having more on your mind than needs to be. That's the foundation of mental health. Then you have to build from there. Now, some people have deeper psychological issues than others. But no matter who you are, whether you're Elon Musk, Nancy Pelosi, Inspirational Nomad, or Bob Wells, everything starts with eliminating what you don't need. So you can focus on what you need and want to do. Look at every failure as an opportunity okay, to reset your life and leave behind the stuff you don't need. And what I found out, okay, you don't need much. And whatever you don't have with you, there's a Walmart everywhere. I've traveled up and down the East Coast from the, the mountains of Vermont, the, the mountains of Vermont where you get no cell phone reception, to the South Beach Mecca. And what I found out is I definitely don't want to be in Vermont. Okay, <laughs> I love everyone from Vermont, guys. I gotta be in South Beach, okay, or South Florida. But I had to find that out through my own exploration. But what I found out is, guys, there's a Walmart everywhere. Now, not too much in Vermont, but there's a Walmart everywhere. If you need a jacket and you're in Vermont, you can go to a Walmart. If you need some sandals and you're down South Beach, guys, there's a Walmart everywhere. There's DoorDash opportunities everywhere. Okay. You don't need much, guys. I got no underwear on right now. I don't need underwear. You say, Sam, what if tomorrow Donald Trump wants to call you to the White House and accept the Nobel Peace Prize? I said, well, one is I still don't need underwear, but let's just say I did need underwear. What would I do? I would go to Walmart, man, and buy underwear tomorrow, guys, and then I'll throw it away the next day, man. You don't need much. Let that encourage you. Then, you know, you think for retirement you need $1.5 million dollars. You need, you know, a certain amount of passive income. All that's great. You know, set your goals. But guys, above that, you need to downsize, simply meaning eliminate the stuff that's waste. You need to relocate. All the money in the world will not inspire you if you're not living where you want. Example, right now, if you say, Sam, I'll make you a billion dollars. I'll give you a billion dollars. But you have to live and die in Alaska. Guys, I, I said, fuck you. I'll door dash the rest of my life. Okay? Why? I can't die in Alaska, guys. I, I don't, I'm don't. i scared to even die in New Jersey visiting my mom. <laughs> I told my mom that the other day. I said, you know, I don't want to die here. Okay? Now, love and respect to my viewer, MVRV. She's from Alaska. And we're going to get to all live comments, guys. I'm on a roll. I'm just feeling it today. I hope this helps you. Thank you to everyone who watches. Thank you to all my members. But I hope this helps you. All right, let's continue with you guys. Let's take out Jason Big. I feel it tonight. I feel it. <laughs> Sonia's in the house. Uh, where are we at? Norma. Oh, yes, he got the red card. Oh, that's got you taking the first step. But for some reason, they still won't link my bank account. Persistence beats resistance. Keep trying, Norma. Sriracha, what's up? I like that name. 26, married, two kids. Okay. You're definitely thinking about downsizing and get more out of life. You could do it. What I tell you is, I love one is I love that name, Sriracha. I hope I'm saying it right. Even if you were married with two kids, I have, I, have a, I have some friends I grew up with, they got married with two kids, and I think they're still in love, and they re relocated their life. Again, I don't think they downsized, but they relocated, but they can, you can downsize any time. How much does one person need? 250 square feet, and I think you can round that down to 200. If you had a house, like what Sriracha said, he's got a house of how many people? He's married, so that's two people and two kids, four kids. He's got four people in the house. You don't need more than a thousand square feet with four people. Every apartment you look to rent, every house you look to buy, 
if you got four people in a house, should never be more than a thousand square foot. 250 square foot per person max. Why? Not just for money, but for maintenance. For the time you have to clean it. For the amount of property tax you have to pay, for the amount of time you got to take to, to cool, heat, maintain. And you're probably living in an area you hate, don't inspire you. Your neighbors, you don't, you don't like them. Your, 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 your local grocery store is dookie emoji. Okay. You know, everyone's happy about the Giorno pizza. Guys, if going to the supermarket to get the Giorno pizza is on a list that makes you happy, guys, you're living a wrong life. I wish I could take you to Publix in South Florida. I did a I did a YouTube video of the Publix in Boca Raton, Florida. I want you to Google that. Inspirational Nomad, Boca Raton Publix. Guys, if you go to that supermarket with two kids and a wife, you're gonna be inspired. Okay. You go to a shop right, okay, in Woodbridge, New Jersey, guys, you destroy your life. Now, for me, this is my opinion. But I want to give hope. To, guys, even if you're married, you, what is what I learned with children? Is look, if, if their parents love them and they don't try to rule over their kids, kids will always, you know, kids are going to be cool with you. Kids are always going to be kids, you know, pain in the ass sometimes. But if you got a loving household, that overcomes everything. But if you're not in agreement with your wife, guys, better to get a divorce. But if you are in agreement with your wife, don't matter if you live in New Jersey or Florida, if you're happy at home, it don't matter. It damn sure don't matter if you have a 1,500 square foot house or a 1,000 square foot house. And if it does, you got a shitty marriage. If, if, if someone in the, in, in the house is not happy with a 1,000 square foot, guys, you can still give everyone their own room. That's important to have your own space, but you don't need to go crazy. Right, let's continue. Becca, living a life through daily habits that are enjoyable to you. Damn it, Mecca, you're taking notes. I remember the first time I went to church with a friend of mine. I was getting saved. Now, I grew up in a Catholic church, okay? I, then I went to a non-denominational church, okay, with a Baptist field. So from going from a Catholic church to a Baptist church, big difference, guys, okay? So I remember one of the first times I'm in the church, okay, the, the non-denominational church, and there, people are taking notes. I said, what, what are they taking notes for? I asked my friend. He said, oh, they're writing down, like, scripture and lessons, now, come to find out, they're still living foul. <laughs> Even if you take notes in church, don't mean you're living right, but it helps. So. But it does help to write down what you're thinking and your goals and a specific plan. Every night, sometimes I just write top three things I want to talk about. Like tonight, I wrote down retire early in three things. I wrote downsize, relocate, and redirect your energy. Now, Mecca repeated the third step. She wrote down notes. Now I go, I go, I ad lib because I believe in creativity, but I structure my life. Life is about structure and creativity. You need a level of structure, not too much though. Cause you got to bash against the wall a little bit. You got you know, you got to do bumper cars a little bit. You got to get out there and have fun. But if you do all bumper cars and no structure, guys could be a psychopath with a helmet on. Okay. I know some people wear a, a football helmet. They never played in the NFL. Not good. Not good. Okay. Right, take care of your mental health, guys. Come on. Uh, Norma, my member. So wise to downsize first. I love you, Norma. You're already there. Norma, you're close. All you got to do is get your first door dash under your belt. You're going to be great. Sam, helps everything else fall in place. you damn right. Simplify your life and go from there. I own less than anyone I know. You're living a dream already. You're already retired. And I think I still have too much. Norma, you always got too much. Guys, I guarantee you right now, I could go in my backseat, guys. Did you ever see a Jeep Renegade? Okay. I live in 10 square feet. Okay. <laughs> in one, I own one bag with clothes. I can go back there right now. I could find a hoodie, a t-shirt, and I don't have many, and I could throw it out and, and never remember why I threw it. And, and, and I, I'd lack nothing. And then one day, if I say, you know what? I, I really need another hoodie or another sweatshirt. Guys, I go to Walmart tomorrow. Okay. When in doubt, throw it out. That's what I tell you. Anyone struggling downsizing, whether you're selling your house, throwing out stuff in your closet, or going through a divorce and trying to figure out what you want to take with you, when in doubt, throw it out. 
And if Salvation Army don't want it, don't 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 sell it on Craigslist. Don't go to Facebook Facebook Marketplace. I want you to take it in back of your house and have a campfire, okay, and burn it. Okay. When in doubt, throw it out. Let's continue. Old Gringo, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for joining uh, the membership today, brother. Every, again, every Sunday I do a members only chat on this channel. If you're not a member, you can click that blue join button. Like old gringo, you'll see a little member sign next to his name. Um, and you'll be part of the member only chats. Love to you, brother, and thank you. Mega, good word. Thank you for I appreciate you. Old gringo, thumbs up. Thank you, brother, for sharing your story. Frank, what's up, man? What are the best beaches on the east coast of Florida? Great question. Uh, any beach in Palm Beach County? Thumbs up. Just about. I would say the beaches don't get good till Palm Beach County down to Dade County. You can drive Highway A1A. A1A hugs the east coast of Florida. All the way from St. Augustine down to Miami Beach. All the beaches are nice, but you don't get the tropical beaches until you get into Palm Beach County. Palm Beach County down to Dade County. That's that's pretty much like an hour and a half drive on the southeast tip of Florida. You take that. You drive all up and down the A Highway A1A. You're going to pass Mar-a-Lago. You're going to pass some beautiful homes. And you'll, you'll figure out what your best spot is for you because they all have a little bit different flavor. But I can tell you right now, best beaches in the world. If you want to go to the Caribbean but have American infrastructure, guys, go to South Florida. You know, guys, South Florida got it made, man. You have the Caribbean in America. Okay? You can door dash and swim in the beautiful tropical Caribbean beaches of Southeast Florida. You say, Sam, I'm thinking about moving to Sarasota. Don't do that. Uh, unless you're a good viewer. I know a psychopath on YouTube from Sarasota. He's a disgrace. And the West Coast of Florida is the Gulf of Mexico. Guys, whole different feel. Uh, no disrespect. I got some great viewers from Southwest Florida, but I got to share. I got to be myself. The Gulf of Mexico has no negative ions. The Gulf of Mexico is the backwash of a toilet bowl. The Atlantic Ocean is God breathing life. Into the citizens of Southeast Florida. So what I could tell you is if you're looking for a BP oil spill, go to the Gulf of Mexico. If you want to see Jennifer Lopez in a G-string, go to Southeast Florida. Relocate. That's step number two, man. But see, I, you know, for some people, they may want to go to the West Coast. I got to East Coast of Florida. Damn, I got to take a hydration break. I'm getting all worked up tonight, guys. I'm on fire tonight. We're not even close to halfway done with the comments. We're going to get there. I uh, love to you, Frank. I hope that helped a little bit, man. Old Gringo, that's my guy. Downward class migration. All I can tell you is I used to obsess, and even sometimes I do now, over having a certain amount of money. And you need a certain amount of money. I'm not going to pander to you guys. But when I've obsessed and risked Risked a lot of money to make more money and lost. When I realized that, Sam, why are you killing yourself trying to make so much money when as long as you work and you're somewhat responsible and not don't overconsume, you don't need a lot to enjoy life. And if you even if you say now that we're in a corporate welfare state and all the elites are screwing us, you may be right, but I this is what I do to, to, to calm myself and not become a political junkie. It, it, right now we're in the year 2020. 36 million Americans are laid off. If we went back to 1920, we are 100% better, even with 36 million Americans laid off. Why? Because every one of those 36 million Americans are basically getting $1,000 a week. That's what unemployment is. Unemployment in the lowest state in Florida, pretty much is the lowest state amount, $275 a week plus 600. That's basically $1,000 a week. And if you're not unemployed, you're employed. And if you never worked in your life, like some family members, they're getting about $1,000 a month, food stamps, subsidized housing, and they got the stimulus check, guys. Even in, in these horrible times, guys, we're better than we were in 1920. Even with Trump taking hydroxychloroquine, guys, we're better than we were in 1920. I'm on YouTube, guys, I'm YouTube famous. I couldn't do this in 1920. I would be on a farm. You would be on a farm. I don't want to be a farmer. I've seen that one like uh, 
dating site farmers.com and they were like dating other farmers. Guys, I don't want to live that life. Okay? Let's stay positive. Uh, Mac and laughing good. Luke, Blanton, Luke. Just another perspective. Starting August, a friend and I are renting a three bedroom. I hate roommates, but I love you. And it's uh, $550 a piece. Nah, I can't co sign that. All utilities included. Nope. I, Blaine, instead of every. You, are you trying to tell me you got three guys living in the same house and each of them are paying $550? That's, that's a disaster. You're never going to find your best life living with three other men, even if you all get with each other. Why? Because it's going to destroy your life. There's a point of your journey where you got to walk alone, especially after college. You should spend $550, rent a studio apartment in a decent neighborhood. That's what I tell you. In my opinion, do what you want, brother. I love you. I love Tom. I love Bland, Tom Hanks. But you got to figure out your own journey a little bit. You got to take some time for yourself. In my opinion, unless you were in desperate times, never have a roommate. Never. There's plenty of time in life to be married. There may come a time in your old retirement age... That you have to leave, live in a senior citizen's care facility where you got roommates. But in between, when, when you get out of your parents' house, you want to be independent. Guys, even if you're a social butterfly, even if you love people, you need some time by yourself. I think roommates are basically demons sent to test your holiness. And what I can tell you is if you survive a roommate, it's only by the grace of God. But that's my opinion. All right, let's continue. He goes, three roommates, all utilities included, guys. They couldn't pay me to live there, man. There's some nice spots that you can find for cheap. I love you, brother. You know, man? This is interesting. Implement the lifestyle. Yes. Part of retirement, damn it. Before you're done working. Yeah, we can do it right now. Makes excellent sense, guys. I'm living it. Okay? You can do it right now. Frank, what's the average rent for one bedroom in Florida, a safe neighborhood? I would say about $1,200 a month. It may not be the best area, won't be the worst, but about $1,200 a month you can get for a one bedroom, a uh, decent area. I, could, I would say that. Uh, old Gringo, thank you again, brother. I know I read that, but again, I appreciate your membership and your tip. Again, I want to read it again because I think it's an important message. Someone going through a divorce or someone went through a bankruptcy. He says, as a 50 year seven-year-old man, as a 57-year-old man who has lost everything and had to start all over, it's not the end of the world. Don't give up. I just have different goals now. Guys, whether it's quitting cigarettes, getting a divorce, or losing everything in an investment, take a breath. Separate from what's hurting you and realize that you will find joy again. It'll take time. You'll do it. Mecca, downsize, relocate, redirect your energy. Mecca, I could tell you were in a church game for a while because there's no way you're taking that good of notes. You've never been in a church game. Old Gringo, thumbs up. Old Gringo, I smoked cigarettes for 25 years. Quit in 2009. Best thing you can do. Cigarettes kill more people than the coronavirus. 500,000 people die per year smoking cigarettes. Why are they still legal? Money bag emoji. Okay. Cigarettes, most dangerous drug humanity ever had. You say, Sam, I thought hydrochloroxygen was, was uh, hydrochloroquine or whatever was deadly. No, no, no. Tobacco is deadly. Okay. Okay. Be careful, guys. Uh, no, I smoked for a long time, too. I felt the same like it was losing my best friend laughing. But I stopped 10 years ago, and now it makes me sick also. The person you think you can't live without, if, if you separate from them, for at least three years, no contact to a big degree. Five years from now, you will find joy again. Same thing with cigarettes, alcohol, or anything else. But you have to stop the self-induced harm. Not easy. Okay, Not easy. I want to do a, a whole life feed on, I, in my life experience, I think a big part of our stress and heartache is self-induced. I don't know the percentage. I'm still trying to figure that out. I realize there's some hard luck things in life that none of us can control. It can happen to us anytime, bad luck. But I, I have learned that a big part of our stress and misery is self-induced. 
We just have, we're not ready to be honest with ourselves. We're not ready to accept that the relationship's over. We're not ready to accept that I'm not making money day trading. We're not ready to accept that what once I thought I couldn't live without, I have to live without to get to the next step. But everyone has to figure that out on their own. Some people never figure it out. They'll die doing a certain thing. I may do a die doing a certain thing. So I'm not telling you one of the things I said you have to stop doing. I'm just trying to tell you, make a mental note somewhere in your mind that most of our stress is self-induced. And the only way to get out of that vicious cycle is to separate. Very important. All right, good job. Oh, Gringo, yep. Fire emoji. Uh, Gina, shout out to Israel. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing the best I can. I feel good, so I'll take a good day when I can take it. He says, I'm going to be 35 next month. Well, let me know what day when you're when it's your birthday. I'll sing happy birthday to you, brother. I'm single, but recently I feel lonely. I know you've struggled with that. You told me that in the past. For every time you get lonely, number one, you should masturbate. Because hormones and loneliness are sometimes confused. Last night, I masturbated two times. And after I masturbated, I did not feel lonely. It's true. But I didn't masturbate in two days. Before I masturbated, guys, I was like, you know, you got you want to be with someone. So I'm just trying to tell you, separate hormones from emotion. It's amazing that when we hit the age of 13, our whole outlook on life changes. So when you hit the age of 13, you know what happens? Your hormones kick in. You're not lonelier now that you're 13. Your hormones kicked in. You got puberty. Well, you know, that's what starts the beginning of your life. When do we reach our children? Not pre-K. Early education is an abomination. You need to start education in middle school and the beginning of high school. Because when you hit puberty, that's when life begins. And loneliness and hormones need to be separated. Then loneliness and laziness need to be separated. What do you mean by that? Inspirational moment. I'm on fire tonight. A lot of times you're lonely because you don't want to do the self-care of your life. It's a distraction. I guarantee you right now, if you're lonely, if you go for a 20-minute walk, I guarantee you your mood would change and you're not lonely. But most people won't go for a 20-minute walk. They'll get their big ass up and they'll walk to the kitchen. They'll be lonely. They'll eat a journal pizza and they'll text someone. I challenge anyone in this live feed to go for a 20-minute walk and tell me you're still lonely. I challenge you. I don't care if you're in Israel, Pakistan, or New Jersey. Self-care is a full-time job. And loneliness is a sign you're not doing enough self-care. Self-care includes masturbation and going for a walk. And healthy eating. Guys, I'm screaming in the middle of a gas station. Okay. It don't get no realer than this, man. Right, let's continue. Oh, gringo. Thumbs up. 100 emoji. Thank you, man. No, man. Just sitting uh, in where the F Wisconsin way for Brett Favre to come, I guess. I love you no more. Ryan B. Damn it, I was looking at my video I did of the RAV4 hybrid. If you want to see a video of the RAV4 hybrid, YouTube search Inspirational Nomad RAV4 hybrid. That's what Ryan B. drives and lives out of in Utah. Great topic tonight, Sam. Good to see you. Always a blessing to see you, brother. Watch out, because I know you're in love with uh, Outlier Aaron, but I'm not mad at you. I'm not coming to the wedding, though. Mecca, heart emoji, fair emoji. Thank you. Take a bell. No. Do you live in an RV, if you don't mind me asking? Sonia, it's great to see you. Love to you. You stay positive. You keep working on self-care. You go for a walk, and you're going to figure out life. You're a young, intelligent woman. Old gringo. John Mellencamp once said, most men are not mature enough to know what they are doing until they're about 35, 40 years old. I totally agree. I totally agree. I think most men and women can say that. But definitely men, because men do tend to mature a little bit later in life. So that means a woman like 25, 30, that's, you know. But women, right now, my, my Jesse O, my first ever member, Jesse O, she trades stocks. Now, she told it. She went bankrupt trading other people's money. Now she's trading her own money. So if you want to be a day trader, don't trade other people's money, trade your own. And not too much mar margin. Don't do too much margin. But Jesse O's 29. She's thinking about she wants to have a kid. When you hit 25 to 30 as a woman, your shot clock is like Michael Jordan in game six. You're thinking about you got to shoot the shot. Khloe Kardashian about to have uh, Tristan's second child. It's going to destroy her life. 
But that's her choice. Guys, less is more, including children. Good job. Luke, 100% vibe is everything where you live. Your environment matters. I agree with you, my man. Love to you, brother. Little Viking coach. What's up, man? Have you hit the thumbs up today? Well, I like that question, guys. If you haven't clicked that thumbs up, please do it. We got 29 likes. Can we get up to 100? I know that's hopeful, but you have a target. Uh, thank you, brother. Joey, what's up, man? Downsizing is a wise decision. I amen to that. He says, downsizing is a wise decision. Letting my Dodge go in exchange was the best decision I ever made. Now I have no car, man. Praise the Lord. I, on average, a new car is 59% of people's pay waste of money. I've been there. Joey, are you the guy with the Dodge Charger? I tell you right now, a Dodge Charger is, is, is a car from hell. Satan, Satan built the Dodge Charger. And if you're driving a Hellcat, guys, if you're driving a Charger Hellcat, it, it's self-explanatory. Like when you watch porn, it says devil films. Like I sometimes I can't even watch those ones. Guys, I'm not saying like the, the Hellcat is from Satan. But I'm just trying to say it's a Hellcat, man. Be careful, right? Joey, I use car for cash is worth it. Love to you, brother. Less is more. I appreciate you sharing. Old Gringo, I used to travel with just one bag. I'd fly from city to city or drive when I had a vehicle. The bag was a Navy SEAL bag. All of my possessions fit into it. I like it. That's Rambo style. Old Gringo, I lived in a van. I think that's awesome. Was a flea market bomb. Hey, you're just living your life. Back in the early 1980s. Love to you, old Gringo. Love to hear these stories. Old Gringo, thumbs up 100. Tony, Old Gringo, what's a flea market bum? Haven't heard that before. Old Gringo, a flea market bum or a gypsy lives in a van usually and travels from flea market to flea market. I never heard of that either. AKA swap meet. Okay, I heard of that. Selling new or used goods. Oh, okay. So that's basically like the old school, old school eBay. So a lot of people now, they eBay. They buy something at Ross Shoes. They sell it on eBay for hire. They buy something at the thrift store and they sell it on eBay for hire. That's a flea market, uh, Gypsy. Check it out. Yes, very true. If you can't be yourself, yep, leave the group of person. Amen, says the choir. You will feel emotionally numb around them. Tinkerbell, you figured out life? Tinkerbell, you're retired. Right now, you're retired. That's what I tell you, right now. All right, good job. Oh, Gringo, we would get a hotel room after a week or two. Great, great comment. After selling. Guys, like I think about that, if... If you're living in your car, van, or RV, if you're living in your car, van, and if it's too hot this summer, go rent a hotel or a short-term rental for two months until it's full. If you move to South Florida and it's too hot in the summer to live in your car, rent an Airbnb for a month or two months. Guys, a short-term lease is a blessing from the Lord. Okay. You're not committed long-term. You can change. And don't rent more than what you need. One person does not need more than 250 square feet. If you're like Sriracha, if you got a wife and two kids, you don't need more than a thousand square feet. Never forget it. Continue to read, Tony. Thanks, Ringo. Haven't heard that before. La, la, la. My simple lifestyle, compromise of my life, but it's Zillow. Friends and simple as possible. My mom, dad can give me the money for the house. Venice, Florida, 10500 I love you and I respect you, but I hate houses. Okay. Only buy a house. If you have a mindset for maintenance, only buy a house. If you have a mindset for commitment, only buy a house. If you've been to that area, you're inspired by that area. You can sustain an income in that area. As a nomad, your greatest asset is your flexibility. Whether you're selling stuff at the flea market, selling stuff on eBay, door dashing, massage parlor, or technology, your ability to go from Orlando to Miami like this relocation is how you retire now. But when you have to sell a house in order to relocate, big difference. Okay, you're not retired. Okay, big difference. Now right, let's take five. Old Grego, no problem, Tony G. No my take your bell. No, I don't have an RV. I live out of my Toyota Camry. I like the Camry's big. Take your bell. Thank you, Norman. Take your bell. I don't get how people invest and constantly make a profit. They don't. Most people lie. So don't don't feel bad if you lose a bunch of money. Most people are losing money. They're just they're it's a it's a shell game, Norma. Uh, are you a nomad also, Tinkerbell? Tinkerbell, what's the fastest way get out of junk, get out of funk after being in a relationship? Go for a walk. If you are unwilling to go for a 20-minute walk, you'll never get out of that relationship. You will go to 20 different therapists, 
20 different support groups. You'll listen to Oprah when she tells you you can eat all the bread you want and lose weight. If you are unwilling to go for a 20-minute walk, you'll never change your life. How do you get out of a bad relationship? Go for a 20-minute walk. Now you're not lonely. Now you're not confused. Now you're focused. After, after, and only after a 20-minute walk. Never forget it. Tinkerbell. At Norma, currently I'm with someone, so no, but I enjoy the to the be content. Tinkerbell. If you refuse to go to work and the job asks you to come back, then yes, they can stop your unemployment, I believe. Okay, I didn't know that. But never forget my quote. If you don't work, your dreams don't work. Never forget it. No, my. This is good information, Sam. I work for myself. Well, hey, you're the boss. You know, so you, yeah, you're a 1099 worker. That's what DoorDash is. So you call shots. I work for myself and also for another company. Okay. Well, my boss at the other company reopened, he told me, I either come back or no more unemployment. Okay. I guess I was lied to. No, you may have not been lied to because part of the stimulus package was that if the company applied for it, they also have to hire you back. And if you refuse to come back, then they can still collect their small business loan. So guys, that's why I tell you have many hustles. That's why I tell you DoorDash when you don't need to DoorDash. That's why I tell you that retirement has really nothing to do about stop working. Because if you've already downsized, if you've already relocated, and if you've already redirected your energy to things that are important to you, you can do several side hustles. You can door dash, you can massage therapy, you can clean houses, fill in the blank. You can work at Walmart. So Norma, you're blessed. You're single. I don't think you have kids. You have a lot of flexibility. You're right downsized. You can relocate like this. Even if you don't get unemployment, you can still live a great life. Okay. Now you're going to have to work. I'll never pander to you guys. In some way, in some form. And even if you're totally financially independent, I would hurt you and lie to you if I said you didn't have to work. You say, Sam, what do you mean? If I'm financially independent, why do I have to work? Because self-care is a full-time job. If you think that having a million dollars in the bank account and having 5 to 7% interest and living off that interest is the only job you have to do, you haven't realized that you got to get your big ass out of the seat and go for a walk. I have to tell myself this. All of us have to tell ourselves this. Why? You want to live your best life? You want to live retired? Or you want to be in a senior citizen home? Good job. Norma, thank you because I'm going to research that. Research it more, Norma. There's always ways around the system. Mal. Buenas noches from Spain. Yeah, thank you, brother. Good to see you, man. Shout out to everyone in Spain. Norma, I missed the $10 super chat. What's going on? Norma, I can't believe I missed it. Damn it, I'm so worked up. I didn't see it. Now I feel like I neglected my viewers. I missed a bunch of super chats. Oh my God, guys, I got to go down the super chat list. Guys, forgive me for I've said Norma, finders fee for unemployment. Love you, Sam. Oh, I hope it's true. Find out first. Find out first, Norma. I'm sorry. I'm so worked up tonight. I missed that, Norma. I love you. And Pluto also gave me a super chat. Pluto, man, love positivity, brother. Pluto, I love you. Downsize, relocate, and you can do it, brother. I love you. Thank you, man. Red Pill, you're speaking the facts, bro. Thank you. Thank you, Red Pill. Sorry, I got so worked up, and I did not mean to neglect you guys. And shout out to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, man. Uh, Donatello was my favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Norma, forgive me, Norma. Forgive me, Pluto. And forgive me, Red Pill. Guys, I so worked up tonight. I wasn't even looking at my uh, you, my uh, laptop, man. Thank you guys for the tips, man. And But yes, do research, Norma. Uh, because, guys, you got to put a little bit of effort into it. You'll figure it out. Good job. Whew. We're on fire. I couldn't even believe I didn't even miss that. Um, uh, back to Norma. She goes, in Georgia, they had employers file mass claims for all of their employees. Yep. He opened back up. Yeah, so it sounds like the small business loan type thing. Uh and he told me it was over. I was looking, filing for myself. Yeah, there's a lot of dynamics there. There's the 1099 portion of your income, and then there's the other income from an employer. So, and each state is different, so I don't want to give you misinformation. However, you have the skill set, you have the ability to earn an income even if unemployment goes away on your terms, Okay. So I truly believe you're going to be all right. I love you, Norma. You're going to be okay. Frank, health insurance is expensive. I totally agree. That's where I think America needs reform. Health care bills, medical bills, number one cause of bankruptcy. 
Okay. I think that I know that America is the only industrialized first world country that doesn't have universal health care. Now, you get it when you're 66 with Medicaid. But, guys, all the money we dump into the system, we could do a basic health care, okay? Not plastic surgery, but basic health care. I agree with that. Oh, Gringo? Uh, merch idea. Disaster t-shirts. Well, I appreciate that, brother. God bless you. They're coming, man. They're coming. I love you. Uh, thank you for sharing tonight, old Gringo. Thank you, everyone. Forgive me if I'm slow on these comments tonight, guys. Forgive me. I don't mean disrespect. I just, I'm worked up tonight. Good comment, Frank, though. I agree with you. Tinkerbell, I'm thinking about doing DoorDash. Do it before you have to do it. But I don't want to put all those miles on my car. Well, guys, look. You could say, I don't, I want to walk, but I don't want to put wear and tear on my ligaments. If you don't work, your dreams don't work. Guys, why do you buy a car so you can use it? Why do you have something so you can use it? If you don't use something, you shouldn't have it. That's what downsizing is. What do you use a car for? A car is transportation. The only time a car makes you money is when you go to your job. Every time else, your car loses money. When your car sits in your driveway, it loses money because you still got to pay insurance for it. So you have an expense, but you don't have income. When you take your car out of the driveway and you do a door dash, you just made income. And now your insurance is a tax write-off. Hey, guys, look. When I was an electrical contractor, I had to buy tools. So you have to make an investment, use the tools, and then you make a return. Your car is a tool, okay? Use your tools to produce an income. Oh, guys, we're on fire tonight, guys. Good to see good people in here tonight, man. I hope you guys are feeling it. I love you. Take a bell. I bet when she gets through the college, she will need therapy. Well, guys, I t try to tell you right now, you could waste your life in therapy. I dated a girl, okay? She was in therapy. Then she would come home and read a book about seducing her therapist. A lot of people in therapy fucking off their life. That's right. Okay. So what I could tell you is I will never take the disability check away from you. But I will never be friends with you if you're unwilling to do the self-care of your life. Because no therapist can fix you. Because if you don't work, your dreams don't work. Okay. So guys, therapy is a tool. You still have to use the tool. When you go to therapy, the therapist teaches you tools to use and apply to your life. So it's just like having a car. If you have a car and you don't door dash, you're not using your tool. If you go to your therapist's office and she tells you how to deal with certain situations and you don't do them, you're not using your tool. And if you search 20 different therapists and you find the only one that will subscribe you prescription drugs but will never tell the truth to you, screw you. Okay. Guys, I am for a level of social support. I am a humanitarian. However, I am not a deceiver. I would deceive you if I told you that someone else can 100% fix your life. A therapist can't. A president can't. Your mom can't. I love my mom. I've been blessed with a good mom. But both my other siblings are on drugs dating unhealthy people. So guys, you can have a great parent. You can have a great therapist. But you have to do the work of your life. Okay. And if not, you're going to blame your parents. Guys, you know what one of my... Guys, my sibling blamed my parent. Okay. I don't blame anyone for shit. So you got to find balance. And you got to go on a journey of self-discovery. Retirement is not just collecting Social Security. That's a social support system that I support. I'm voting for Joe Biden, not because I think he's a better guy, but because I think that him and Trump are both on the same level as far as I don't like. But Joe Biden says Social Security at 60. However, a lot of people that are into like just the social part, they say, yeah, but then they collect social security at 60 and they still not living their best life. So guys, like I told you, to me, it don't matter if Donald Trump gets reelected or not, because when he got elected the first time, I didn't throw a fit. 
Once in a while, I go into a rant. But guys, once in a while, when Obama was in, I would go into a rant about Obama. Guys, whether it was Bush, Clinton, Obama, whatever, guys, I had to do the work of my life. I was obese. Did Obama help me lose weight? No. Okay. Now, now, Michelle Obama tried to get healthier food in the school system, and Trump reversed that. So I will say that. But guys, even if you have healthier food, you still have to choose. So even if you collect social security, you still have to downsize. I know a lot of people living on a social program, disability, welfare, unemployment, and they got a, they got a storage unit. Guys, if you're on disability or social security and you have a storage unit, guys, you're paying some of your social security to pay for stuff you don't use. If you say, Sam, if I was the president, what's a reform I would put in place? Well, one is if you collect a social welfare, you should never have a storage unit unless you're in the process of moving because you're paying someone else to keep stuff that you don't even use. I think storage units destroyed society. I think they taught us that we should pay someone else to keep stuff that we don't use. You say, Sam, what about the rich people that have a million dollar square foot house? They don't use all that stuff. I said, well, guys, I don't desire that life. If you desire it, go for it. Okay. But Elon Musk, he's a billionaire. He's been divorced. He just had a six kid. He went back to work the next day. Why? I don't think he can stand to be alone. I don't think he can stand to be alone with his family. I think Elon Musk gets more turned on by going zero to 60 in an electrical vehicle than he does with spending time with his family. That's what I think. Short Tesla. No, I'm just playing. Don't do that. <laughs> All right, guys, let's continue. <laughs> Take your belt. Make sure you save enough for taxes right off your expenses. I agree with that. Your emergency fund and document everything. Tony, Sam. Did you see Norma's super chat? No, I didn't, Tony. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, I was worked up tonight, and I apologize. I appreciate you pointing that out. Carlos laughing. Thank you. Tinkerbell, I like your personality, Sam. I hope one day you can do a meet and greet. Well, I love you, and I appreciate that sentiment. But I am an introvert, and I, I tend to like to be by myself. I'm not. I'm good with people, but I, I'm just not like a meet and greet guy. And I don't want to lie to you and mislead you. And then you say, Sam, I, th I thought we were going to do meet and greet. I'll probably never do a meet and greet. I have met a couple of viewers that like stopped me in the street and they were very nice to me and I, I got love for them, but I'm more like in the cut. 99.9% .9 of my time is by myself. Not because I don't respect people, but I just like to be by myself. But thank you for that compliment. Juliana, shout out to Australia. Let's take address break. Right, mate. Oh yeah. He, I listened to the Dave Ramsey phone call with that girl. I can't even listen to Dave Ramsey anymore without getting upset. And he don't know anything, man. Dave Ramsey don't know about real life, man. He doesn't know that fake-ass therapist. Guys, if you think a therapist will change your life, I want you to listen to Dave Ramsey. He got some horrible therapist. And Dave Ramsey, guys, these guys don't know shit. That's what I think. And he goes, I listened to that phone call with that girl. Not worth the free ride to college. Get out and live your life. I agree, but she don't want to work. So she ain't going to work. Her dreams ain't going to work. She's going to blame her daddy. Okay? That's why it ain't going to work. Old gringo. Hey, David. Uh, men... Uh, he's giving a quote now. Men have become the tools of their tools. Simple. People are being controlled by things they work with. Our life is frittered away by detail. Simplify, simplify. Amen, says the choir. Good job, old gringo. Take about laughing. You said F that. Oh, yeah. I think in the day it stays dark like night certain times of the year. I already don't like the winter. Well, I agree with that. Relocate that step two of the, uh, retirement right now. So I'd probably deny that billion dollars too. Guys, after you take care of your essentials, Sam, what are the essentials of life? Shelter and food. After the essentials, what do you want to do with your money? It's individual choice. But once you, and no one in America starves to death. I know people poor as hell. No one I know has ever starved to death. Never. 
So one is like, oh, great, you ain't got nothing to lose. You're never going to starve to death in America. And you're never going to go without shelter. Now, you may not want to be in a shelter. You may not always like where you live, but you're never going to go without shelter if you didn't want it. So now, what do you want to do with your life? Good to see you, Tom. Mike drop OG. Love to you, brother. What do you want to do with your life? Okay. No, I'm, I'm on fire. Thank you, Norma, for understanding. I appreciate you so you being so generous to me tonight. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, Tomasco, what's up, man? Great quote tonight. This is a fire emoji tonight, man. I wish I could tattoo that lesson on your forehead. And then he goes, number two, I can't die in Alaska. Shout out to NVRV. NVRV is a viewer who lives full-time in Alaska. Alaska has the petroleum dividend where oil companies who we subsidize give a percentage of their profits to the citizens every year. Okay. So universal income is already out there in Alaska. But guys, there's a reason universal income is in Alaska, not Florida. Because you got to pay people to live in Alaska. Guys, you couldn't pay me to live in Alaska. I, I, live, in, I live in Florida, guys. Ain't no universal income there. No state income tax, though. <laughs> right, let's continue. Yeah, I can't die in Alaska. I don't want to die in New York, New Jersey. I don't want to die here either. I don't ask you. Fred, what's up, man? I heard beaches in New Jersey are reopening. They were packed this weekend, man. Fred, the New Jersey shore was packed this weekend, man. Are you going to go? I was there this weekend. It was packed. It wasn't as good as culture as Southeast Florida. What is the environment? What does it mean to relocate? What does it mean to relocate? It means a different environment. What is an environment? Climate and culture. The culture in New Jersey is different than South Florida. Right now, the climate in New Jersey is getting better. It, it, this weekend, it'll be 75 degrees and sunny. You say, Sam, why is that not better than Florida? Because the culture is different. Like my man BBT, is in, he's from South Carolina. Guys, South Carolina culture, not my style. I love BBT, but I, and I know he loves South Carolina, Palmetto State. But I don't like South Carolina. I like to drive through it on I-95, but I don't like to stay. I got a good friend that owns property in South Carolina, Hilton Head. I love that guy. I hate South Carolina. You say, Sam, that's not right. Guys, I told you New Jersey's a disaster. So you got to be fair. If I say New Jersey's a disaster, I got to say I hate South Carolina too. I hate every place in America. I love America, but I hate every state in America other than Florida. Now, I hate some of the entitled original Floridians that live off the beach and are very nasty. And it's true that they're very anti-diversity in the middle of Florida. They're very anti-Semitic. I had one guy give me anti-Semitic mark out there. Like, what? what? Guys, there's some people in Florida, especially that live in a country port, they're a disgrace. They're a disgrace. Okay. But there's some people in New Jersey, they're a disgrace. Some people in South Carolina, they're a disgrace. Got everyone. Everywhere you go, good and bad. Okay. But part of identifying where you want to relocate is culture. You say, Sam, I hear you screaming in your phone, but I still don't understand culture. All right, let me explain to you. I'm sitting here in an all-night gas station surrounded by electrical transformers, old pine trees, and beaten up apartment buildings. I can go to Southeast Florida and be... By palm trees, sandy beaches, and bikinis. Or I can go to a different part of South Florida and it could be a war zone with guns, high crime, and a lot of car accidents. Or I can go to South Carolina where a Confederate flag may hang on an old house. Culture. Culture is part of an environment. Where should you relocate? Not just where you like the climate, but where you like the culture. Okay. Now, you may like a little house in the middle of nowhere. You like the culture. You got to do you. But never neglect in your journey of relocating because downsize and relocation are your top two steps to retiring out. When you relocate, you have to consider climate and culture. And it's not just moving to South Florida because South Florida has some high crime, bad neighborhoods. You better understand where the culture that you want to live. All right, let's continue. Nick, man, shout out to you. Downsizing is so tough mentally. Oh, yeah, big I totally agree with that. But so important, wise comment. The hardest part is separating yourself from things that are brand new. 
I had to throw out silky underwear that still had the tag on them. I had a vision in my mind that I'd be dating some Asian MILF. I'd take down my pants and she'd see my silky boxer briefs. Now, that became a reality. But I had to eventually say, said, look, I'm not wearing underwear anymore. Okay, I'm not wearing underwear anymore. Okay. At a certain point, I had to say to myself, Sam, even if I throw out all my underwear, I could still buy more underwear. Walmart is everywhere. How do you get past the mental barrier of downsizing? Because that's step number one to retire now. You have to separate from stuff you don't need, don't want, don't use. What is a storage unit? A storage unit is a graveyard for stuff you don't use. That's how hard downsizing is. Downsizing is the difference between a mental disability and sanity. You say, Sam, how can I determine if someone I know has a mental disability? Do they have a storage unit? You say, Sam, that's not right. My wife has a storage unit. My best friend has a storage unit. I say, okay. Do you like to spend time with them? Guys, you got to start eliminating whatever you don't use, you don't want, you don't need. Why? Because they cause you more anxiety, more stress, more resources. I don't care if you're 25, 55, or 75. Retirement always starts with getting rid of stuff you don't use. Downsizing. Guys, no therapist can keep it this real. And still be able to pay off their mortgage. Guys, that's why I'm on YouTube. I got no mortgage. I can speak the truth. Do you want therapy or do you want to be free? Because therapy costs money. Freedom costs the price of self-care. And self-care... is eliminating what you don't need and going for a walk. And you gotta figure that one out. All right, let's continue. Nick, my inherent desire is to hoard. Human nature is to hoard. You know, like they said, we're hunters and gatherers. We kill stuff and we gather. They say some of that may come from evolution where we weren't sure when we would get our next meal, so we would hoard food. Rich people hoard money. Okay, Like some people say, Sam, I don't believe in universal basic income because it will cause inflation or it will cause a collapse in our society. Guys, if you give money to the middle class or poor, they spend it. Consumerism, spending money, grows our economy. When times are bad, people don't spend. That causes a recession. Who hoards the most money? Rich people. That's true. Because guys, I know poor people. I know rich people. And what I can tell you, they hoard that money, man. I'm trying to tell you. Their whole life is based around dodging taxes, hoarding more money. Guys, come on. Okay. That's why I don't care if you're scamming the system on the poor end or the high end. I don't care. Okay. Because it's all a game on both sides. Okay. I am telling everyone. That you could retire now through downsize, relocate, and redirect your energy. The rest of the stuff is all based on your individual life. Good job. Josh, when in doubt, throw it out. Tattoo that on your forehead, Josh. Nick, yeah, we have to train yourself to downsize. I'm pretty decent at it now. But as Sam says, you always have too much. That's right. There's always another Walmart. I'm a nomad and can still downsize. I like that, brother. Great to see you, Josh. Tomasco. When I was living in PR, I preferred the Caribbean side over the Atlantic side. More peaceful waters, great for skydiving. Well, love to you. Everyone likes something different. I know some people that like Southwest Florida over Southeast. But for me, I got to be by Southeast. So a little bit of life in relocation is individual preference. Blue jeans, hubby and I own a farm. Well, love to you, but taxpayers subsidize farmers. Okay. So all I know is whether you're on disability and you live in the inner city 
Or if you're a farmer in the middle of the country, you get subsidized by the government. That's the tax part. And what I can tell you is sell that farm to a corporation who hires immigrants, take your American flag and go live your best life or stay on your inherited farm, keep your subsidized life and enjoy the dookie of cow manure and slaughter animals. Either way, you can live your best life. Good job. Marco. Roommates are the devil, basically, the Diablo. Uh, they test your holiness. That's true. You're taking notes. Jesse, I love you. I saw you. I, I said something, Jesse. I was all worked up tonight. I hope you heard my comment about you. It was all positive. Ralph, what's up, man? Retiring this week after 25 years of college teaching. Cannot wait. Congratulations. You got a pension. A pension was the last thing they took away from the middle class. They replaced it with a 401k that was created by Wall Street in 1978. BVT knows about a pension. He got a pension. That's why he was able to retire. South Carolina has some of the highest poverty in the country. BVT became a conservative, lives in South Carolina, even though he's a ninja, teenage mutant ninja turtle, and he believes in the pizza party. He knows that without his pension, he would be like everyone else in South Carolina that doesn't own a farm. He would be in poverty. So he, he believed in democratic principles, but then he saw Nancy Pelosi and he started to vote Republican. But guys, they're all scamming you. So bottom line is, whether you vote for Nancy Pelosi, Donald Trump, a farmer, or a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, you got to downsize, you got to relocate, you got to redirect your energy. Good job. Uh, so take that pension money, cash out, and do it. Josh, you know, man, I remember a couple streams ago, you mentioned the risk with starting your own business. Yes, most businesses fail. That's statistic fact. Much later down the line, I wanted to try it out because I want to be free of having a boss. No problem. I've had two businesses. What I can tell you is you are now the boss and that's a good thing, but also puts all the liability on you. You have to hustle, you have to work and you have to take out insurance and you have to document all your expenses so that if you need to collect unemployment or you need to pay your payroll tax or your, uh, employment tax, your, your self-employment tax, you need to pay, you need to cover your own disability care, all that. It's a good thing. We downsize so we can take more risk. We downsize so we can take more risk, whether you're day trading like Jesse O, or if you want to start your own business selling merchandise. We downsize so we can take more risk. Part of life is having a little bit of an adventure. So go for it, brother. Just do it wise. Don't touch your emergency fund. Incrementally grow. Josh, and being truly a free nomad, I'm with you. Jesse O, I love you, Jesse O. 100% agree. Never sign a lease with a roommate. Praise the Lord. Uh... I learned the hard way. Hey, we all have. Back in college when roommates threw party. Yep, house party ends quick. Bed bugs and cops showing up. Guys, Motel 6 turns into the trap spot very quickly. And so does your house with roommates. So what I could tell you is if you live below your means, you should have no problem taking $600 a month and renting a studio apartment by yourself. Or being a nomad. And you may not even have to spend $600. Or living in an RV, spending $600 a year with a thousand trails pass. Good job. Josh. How do you feel when you initially started your business, Nomad? I remember you said you don't recommend it. I feel like I would have the discipline skill to do it. I would do it. I recommend you start your own business. I don't recommend you start it without downsizing. Without an emergency fund. And without figuring out where you want to live so that you can start your business where you want to live. And if you want to live on the road, then you have to figure out how to get a remote job. It took me two years. I lived in my car in New Jersey until I could transfer to a remote job. DoorDash wasn't around then. So start your own business. Don't deny yourself the risk of feeling alive. However, mitigate that risk. Because having your own business is liability. Whether you're trading stocks or selling stuff. So mitigate that risk by security and downsizing, relocating to where you want to live, and having an emergency fund. Because then if your business fails, like most businesses do, guess what? You've already liquidated stuff you don't need. You're already living where you want to live. You're retired. <laughs> Guys, what do people do in retirement? They downsize, they relocate, and they, they, they pour their energy into living where they want and doing what they want. So guys, if you do all those things and your business fails and you are living a simple life where you want to live, your life is 
your best life. Ding, 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 ding. Light bulb emoji. Oh, guys, we're on fire tonight. Pluto, I love you, brother. I'm sorry, guys, if I'm slow in the comments tonight. I'm working myself up. I tell you, I got, I got to slow down a little bit tonight, guys. I was inspired tonight. I hope you felt it. I love you guys. Love to you, Pluto. I'm praying for you. Josh, laughing, Nomad. I love it. Uh, I'm having roommates as like, yeah, with a demon. Uh, yeah, they test your holiness, guys. That's true. Uh, let's continue. Pluto, man, thank you again for that super chat. Uh, I really appreciate that. Love your positivity, brother. Thank you. Uh, Triple O, cigarettes were cool. The guys who smoke got the hottest girls. I saw that with my eyes. That's why I started smoking cigarettes at about age 11 because of peer pressure. I wanted to be cool and accepted by certain people. Cigarette companies, which are still publicly traded companies that give a dividend to their shareholders, that's capitalism, lied about the science behind the addiction of cigarettes and the damage they do to your lungs. They advertise to children with camel cigarettes. They advertise to women that this will make you independent if you smoke cigarettes. Cigarettes are the number one cause of preventable deaths. You have the right to smoke cigarettes. You have the right to commit suicide. You have the right to eat the journal pizza. I was obese. You kill yourself. Obesity related disease are the number two cause of uh, preventable deaths. So guys, I'm not preaching anything I don't practice. I stopped smoking cigarettes and I stopped overeating to a point where I was obese. So guys, I'm not saying it's easy. My mom's still obese. I still know no people that smoke cigarettes. Do what you want. But this is my channel sharing with you, how do you retire now? Is your retirement based on smoking cigarettes, drinking, eating Chipotle, and being in a farmland? That's up to you. For me, I want coconut juice dripping all over my body. In Southeast Florida with no debt. With no stuff I don't need. I never want to storage you in a day in my life. I never want another Newport cigarette. I never want cognac on the rocks. I never want Chick-fil-A. You say, Sam, you lost me at Chick-fil-A. I know. Chick-fil-A killing more people than the coronavirus. I'll never, never forget it. That's fried chicken, guys. Never forget it. Or it's saturated in some shit. But thank God for Chipotle and Chick-fil-A. Why? Because that DoorDash popping. Okay. It's amazing to me that the number one cause of preventable death, cigarettes, number two, obesity-related disease. If you worked at Chipotle, do you get health benefits? If you worked at Chick-fil-A, do you get health benefits? No. And they're going to kill you. Many people eat because they can't visualize their retirement. Whether it's financially or physically. What do you mean by physically? Well, like, like I've been describing tonight, you can retire now without a lot of money. But it requires physical action of downsizing, of relocating. And of focusing your energy on your passion and your self-care. For some people, I say, fuck that. Let's order Chipotle. And I understand that. I, don't, I have compassion. Guys, Donald Trump is taking hydroxychloroquine. What are we talking about? Guys, we're talking about a lot of stuff tonight. Let's continue. Uh, one minute review. Laughing good. It's good to laugh. Laughter is good for the soul. Red pill. Thank you again, brother, for that gracious tip. And I appreciate your support, man. Thank you. Shout out to all the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, man. Uh, Jimmy uh, James, what's up, man? Uh, Sam is hot tonight. I appreciate that very much, Jimmy. It's great to see you. And thank you for your comment, brother. Uh, Josh. Yep, no, man. Those lonely people won't even get a Greek salad. They go straight to the journal. Well, my mom eats the journal pizza. And again, I've been obese. I've been anorexic. I've been in the middle. I've had some gay men basically comment when I've gained 10 pounds and say, oh, why'd you gain weight? Guys, I don't want to get with you, right? And I stand for equal rights. 
But don't forget that Caitlyn Jenner voted for Trump. I voted for Hillary, okay? So Caitlyn Jenner's a bitch, whether it's a guy or a girl, okay? And if you care, if I gain five pounds, guys, I don't care because I won't get with you. I'm not doing meet and greets. All right, let's say pause. Uh, Mecca? Sam, what was that? Yeah, uh, yeah, testify emoji. The truth makes it free, praise the Lord. Uh, hormones, pizza, walk, self-care. I agree with that. Loneliness is an indicator you're not working enough. You're damn right. Truth, masturbation. Guys, uh, uh, damn, Mecca, you're taking good notes tonight. Josh, what the F? Chloe got pregnant again. That's the word on Twitter. After she just got cheated on, yep. She threw, uh, who was that girl? Uh, some woods under the bus. Kylie, uh, Kylie's friend. She threw her under the bus. And then she became a bus and had her second child. And then she got plastic surgery and sell you, uh, cosmetic, uh, overpriced stuff. Josh. Uh, speaking of the Dodge Charger, uh-oh. A young guy I worked with was making $15 an hour, at least a brand new Dodge Charger. Well, I can't judge him. I did the same thing when I was young. Very similar. About two months later, he got fired. He wasn't making much and can't pay the car. Well, I can't uh, be judgmental because when I was young, I lived above my means and bought cars that, uh, and too much stuff I shouldn't have. So that's part of being immature. We learn. Josh. Also, Nomad, you see the recent Tota Bellas. Yeah, they're basically both going to divorce their uh, husbands. Uh, John Cena is going to say, thank God I never married uh, Nikki. Uh, and Bree is even going to get a divorce from Brian. And basically, 10 years from now, they're going to have an episode exploiting their divorce for more views. And it's going to be a hit. Uh, I'll watch. Uh, but I don't. I wouldn't want to be a husband to either one of them. That's true. Even though they're hot. I masturbated to them a few times. Uh, yeah, Brian was pissed. Yeah, their divorce is eminent, in my opinion. Josh, those bells are dangerous. Yeah, guys, did you see the leopard skin clothing? They both wear leopard skin clothing. I told you that's a red flag. Say, so say, Sam, I'm a guy. I'm not gay. I don't care if you gain five pounds. I want to know what type of girl I should date. I say, well, never date a girl that wears leopard skin clothing. Why? Because she's a wild animal that can't be domesticated. You say, Sam, that's sexist. I said, no, I'm not. Why? I say, because if you're a girl, never date a guy that do that drives a Dodge Charger. Why? Because, guys, a Dodge Charger is an indicator of a guy that's going to destroy your life and take you through a Hellcat. Okay. So never date a guy that d drives a Dodge Charger. Never date a girl that wears leopard skin clothing. And you shall have a healthy life. Okay? And uh, stay single. That's what I tell you. Josh. The, oh, yeah, right there. Ryan B. I'm training this guy at work. He's living in an apartment with an ex until August. Huh. Yeah, he hates it. He, he basically can't wait to go back to work. He's like Elon Musk. It hurts my soul just thinking about it. Yeah, I got upset about it just thinking about it. I got all well worked up. I'm like, run, dude. Now, don't, don't give me advice, man. Just listen, do your job, and get out of Dodge. And every time, Ryan, every time you're depressed and you go on outline outlier Aaron's uh, channel and you think about flirting with her, I want you to remember that coworker. Because Ryan B, I almost saw you destroy your life. I saw you propose to outlier, and I think outlier Aaron's hot. But I don't want to judge her. I don't want to say anything negative. But let's be honest, okay? You, you don't destroy your life, Ryan. You got everything going for you, brother. You're a young guy. You got a great vehicle, hybrid four, uh, RAV4. That's a very efficient vehicle. Okay, pearl white. You're living in Utah. You love Utah. You don't even need the AC. There's only one thing, Ryan B., that can destroy your life. It's a bad relationship. Okay. So what I can tell you is don't do it to yourself. You say, Sam, what do you mean? I say, Most of our stress is self-induced. When I was trading stocks, and I'm not going to say I never will trade stocks, but too much, too much risk will self-induce stress. Too much uh, dating at all, stress. Relationships, stress. You say, Sam, I want to retire now. Well, don't have relationships. Don't do too many risky things. Do enough risk where you feel alive, but not enough that you hate life. So what I can tell you is this, guys. Keep it simple. Okay? Guys, I could sell stickers for $9.59 saying keep it simple. But guys, I'm not doing that. What I'm telling you is just keep it simple. 
But if you want to be a member, join that. We're going to do members only chat. All right, let's continue. Mega. I better get with this multi hustle before I'm forced to. you damn right. When is the best time to get a job when you currently have a job? I haven't always uh, listened to my own advice. And guess what? Self-induced stressed. Guys, I've learned from my own mistakes and sometimes I repeat my mistakes. One of my mistakes was leaving a job before I secured another job. My other mistake was not doing another side hustle before I had to do it. Because they can lay you off like this. You can get impeached like this. Guys, why do rich people sell books? Why do rich real estate moguls sell real estate programs? Why do famous investors sell investment literature? Side hustles. Why? Because they know they've been through enough life and any minute it can all collapse. Okay. And so what I could tell you is if you're willing to just put a little bit of effort into your life, you don't have to work 80 hours a week. If you just put a little bit of effort in your life, it go a long way. A little proactive effort go a long way. And it'll give you your independence. Does your independence matter to you? It matters to me. Uh, and uh, I want it to matter to you. Good job, Josh. Yeah, Oprah will put you on that Weight Watchers. Yeah, toll scam. Point system that you can eat what you want. Yeah, look at Oprah. Take her advice if you want. Definitely exercise and go for a walk. Guys, I've seen some of the most overweight, unhealthy people preach the Cato diet for two years. I look at them today and they're still out of shape and they forgot about the Cato diet. Remember when the Cato diet was the second coming of Christ? I remember when Slim Fast was the second coming of Christ. Guys, eat less. Go for a walk. Plant-based diet. Drink more water. It's okay if you're moderately overweight. I got five, ten extra pounds on me. Again, I don't want to tell you who tells me that sometimes. Guys, come on. I'm not going to get with you. Let's take a drink. <laughs> yeah, LA woman knows about slim fast. you damn right. Guys, I grew up in a household of all women. I know every diet program that ever existed. Some of you big chicks that grew up in the 80s, you got thunder thighs like a mug, and you got those cankles, and I guarantee you, you may have a thigh master. Okay? Okay? You know damn well every home workout program you bought, every calorie counting, cattle herding, slim fast, intermediate fasting, Church fasting trick you tried didn't do shit for you, okay? You know your big ass just keeps getting bigger, okay? And you want to know what your therapist got to say about that. Well, let me tell you something, man. I'm on YouTube, okay? And what I, I tell you the truth, go for a walk. Stop eating out. Chick-fil-A is killing you. You say, Sam, my big ass gonna order Chick Fil A, but at least I'm laughing. Well, I helped you. Out. I helped you out a little bit, okay? Because I'm not mad at you guys. Because again, I don't care if you're Jennifer Lopez or Monique. I don't want to date you. Why? Because I like to be single. Okay. Okay. I don't care if you're Roseanne Barr. Okay. Or Melania Trump. I don't want to date you. Why? Because guys. I like single. Let's take out your Where are we at? Uh, Norma. I am not too concerned about the unemployment. You, there you go. 
I like to work in debt free. Norma, you are a worker, you're a lover, and I'm very blessed to have you on this channel and to have you as a member. Thank you, Norma. Josh, so true, no man. Money doesn't answer everything. Nope, it's just a resource. It can help, but you got to have the self-care. My previous entrepreneur boss went to high-end retreats with other millionaires, and a lot of those guys were alcoholics, yep, total adrenaline junkies, and did coke on the retreats. Adrenaline junkies. They do the deal just for the high. Michael Jordan came back just for the high. He gambled at Atlantic City just for the high. Michael Jordan was a degenerate gambler. He didn't need the money. He liked the high of the kill. Okay. So what I could tell you is this, guys. A lot of our stress is self-induced. Some people don't need the money, but they need the action. And the action kills your life. Because if you look at your budget, you really don't need to be a multi-millionaire to enjoy a retired life, a good life, your best life. But it's a distraction to think you do. It's an excuse. Let's let's go forward, guys. Good job. Uh, let's continue. Josh, Nomad, how are you? Uh, I'm good. Oh, I was asking Norm. I'm sorry. Norma laughing. No worries, Sam. I knew you would see it. Thank you for understanding, Norma, so much. <laughs> old Gringo, too. Thank you, Norma. Thank you, uh, uh, Pluto. Thank you, Old Gringo. Thank you, uh, Red Pill. Uh, merchandise deal, disaster search. Yeah, that's... Uh, one day I'll do the merch, man. Thank you so much, guys, for your support. Thank you. Uh, Thurston, I survived the Rona. Today, in America, we are declaring national mission accomplished. Donald Trump has taken hydroxychloroquine. We could have a second wave, but as of today, mission accomplished. I don't know the future, but I know this. I already downsized. I already relocated. And I'm already putting my energy into what I want to do. Now, I don't want to die in New Jersey, but I love my mom and I want to spend some quality time with her. Okay. But I thank God I did everything I needed to do to retire right now. Because, guys, I don't want to die drinking hydroxychloroquine. I don't want to die drinking chlorine in your dirty pool in North Carolina. I want to die in Southeast Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. With my favorite Latino mills, my baristas, and my Caribbean vibe that I love. Why? Because that's my dream. That's my retirement life. You do what you want. Uh, Josh, Norma, have you started door dashing? Norma, laughing. I want to walk, but I don't want to wear and tear on my ligaments. I love this. Use what you have. I love you. Thur uh, Thurston, everyone has to pay the piper. That's true. Uh, Al Illinois, nice to catch you live. Good to have your brother. Al Illinois had surgery in January. He has healed since, I believe. Your health is your wealth. Focus on self-care. Milano, I love you, brother. Shout out to Milano. Shout out to Emilio. Shout out to all my brothers and sisters in Southeast Florida. I love you. Sammy, uh, Jay Leno has warehouse full of cars, and he's a psychopath. He's out of shape, he's ugly, and he lives in California. He's got a long-ass chin. Now, I shouldn't have said that, and that's wrong. I apologize. Milano. I don't want to be Jay Leno. You stay Sam. You can be a millionaire. Jay Leno's a multimillionaire. You say, Sam, I'll give you an opportunity right now to change your life. You can become Jay Leno, but you, you can't be yourself. I don't want to be Jay Leno. He can, he can keep his storage unit, of course. He can keep his storage unit, of course. I'm going down to Southeast Florida with no storage unit, no underwear. And I choose to be inspirational no man, not Jay Leno. So now Jay Leno is doing what he should do for him. But I think that he should spend less time collecting cars and more time going for a walk. It'll improve his mental health, his physical health. And I think it'll improve his content. Because I've seen Jay, Lo, uh, uh, Jay, uh, Jay Leno's content. I'm not impressed. I watch replays of myself, not, not Jay, Jay, uh, Jay Leno. That's true. I get inspired watching my own replays. I don't watch Jay Leno. That's true. Guys, Jay Leno's garbage. That's what I think. I think he rode the coattails of uh, Carlson. Uh, who was that guy? Uh, who was that old-ass guy that retired from the late-night show? He was garbage, too. Guys, 
I'm the best thing since Arsenio Hall, man. And Arsenio Hall was overrated compared to me, in my opinion. All right, let's take pause. Uh, Josh, seducing their therapist, that's scary. Never date a girl who reads a book about seducing their therapist. Uh, the rapist, uh, I don't know what it was named, but that's scary. Pluto, I love social support. I love you, brother. Mecca, I feel your frequency. Oh, you feel that energy. On holding friends accountable for that self-care. Damn right, but nah, hold on a sec. Mecca, you got excited. You were taking good notes. You got a little bit off track. Don't hold your friends accountable for your self-care. And I know she quoted the scripture. I know the Bible very well. She goes, faithful are the wounds of a friend. That's true. But now, as I get older, what I think is, if you have friends that don't even have friends, that's what I tell you. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. I got to correct myself. I do have a small circle of people that I would consider my friends outside of YouTube that I just call I don't hang out with. And I'm thankful for them. I'm grateful. And you are correct. I don't want to be... I don't want to have fun at the expense of what you're saying is correct. You need to be with people, obviously, that you can... But the bottom line is be yourself. But the bottom line beyond that is don't even worry about correcting your friend. Worry about yourself. Because you know who gives the best advice? You. Mech, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to all of us. I want you guys to look in the mirror of your phone. Now, some of you guys, when you do a teleconference, you look at yourself like, damn, I got a big chin. Okay. I want you to look at the mirror of your phone. I want you to say to yourself, no one gives good advice like you. Now, take your own advice. I could change Mecca's life right now. You know what? I'll, I'll tell her one thing. Take your own advice. So why am I saying that in reply to her comment? Because what I've learned is don't waste too much energy counseling your friends. You're not their therapist. You're not their therapist. I made a mistake like that. You can give them counsel and love, but hear me out. Never give too much counsel to your friends. Never be a friend with someone you want to get with. And, and if they call you their therapist, you're never going to be in a relationship with them. You're going to drop off food in front of their house when they're sick. And when they get better, they're going to fuck some other guy in a Toyota Tacoma. Can you handle that? You're going to be their best friend when you really want to smack their butt cheeks. You're not, it's not going to happen. If they look at you like their therapist, you are going to be their emotional tampon the rest of their life. Okay. Guys, have you ever seen a tampon? Now, I know some of you guys who are into, like, the cartoon porn, you've never seen a tampon in real life. You've never seen a diva cup. You've never seen the draw in your girlfriend's house where she keep her dirt, dirty, period stain underwear. I'm going to tell you some secrets tonight. And the secret is... If you want to be the period stain on your girl or your friend, on your friends, and capital F, on your friends, life list of priorities, then you have to be okay with being their therapist but not being their fuck buddy. Because you will be an emotional tampon the rest of your life, meaning you're going to get all the bad part about the pussy but none of the good part. Damn it, Rick! $20 super chat. What I can tell you is this. Okay. Never date a girl or a guy that calls you their therapist and show some love and appreciation to Rick S. Damn it, brother. Thank you for that generous tip. Thank you, Rick S. Love to you, brother. Love to you, Norma. Love to you, old gringo. Love to you, Pluto. Love to you, red pill. Love to all my members, all my viewers, everyone who's watching. Thank you. Guys, I'm doing the best I can to share with you how you not just live your best life, how do you retire early and how do you keep your sanity in this world where you got the president taking hydroxychloroquine, where you got 
the person running against the president who can't even put together a sentence. When you got psychopaths on YouTube masturbating to cartoon porn. When you have people trolling your channel that want to get with you and say, Sam, did you gain five pounds, guys? What I can tell you is this. I'm on fire tonight, and you guys feel it. I want to change your life, okay? Jay Leno won't change your life, okay? Your therapist won't change your life. But every night on this channel, around 7 p.m. Eastern time, I change your life, okay? All right, love to you guys. Right, let's say I drink some meat. Thank you, Rick. Spirit of the Lord in here tonight, man. Someone, someone give the horn. Again, I remember when I, when I first started going to a non-denominational church. I grew up in a Catholic church. I went to a non-denominational church for 10 years. Saved my life a little bit. And there was this old lady. I love this old lady. She's a good, good lady. She was a deaconess. And she would blow a horn. I mean like a horn. Like a real horn. And I, like, I was okay with them speaking in tongues, even though I didn't understand that. I was okay with them taking notes. I really didn't understand that. So I'm chilling, listening to the sermon. I got a lot out of the sermon and reading the Bible. But then this old lady, from time to time, she would blow a horn. Like, it's almost like a, a, a seashell horn. And I, I went to my friend and said, what the, what's the horn about, man? And he goes, well, she's call, making a call out to all the people to be ready for the end times and to, like, armor up in faith. She's making a call to all God's children. So, guys, I don't have a, a horn in a church. I don't even have underwear on. Okay. But I'm screaming as loud as I can in an all-night gas station in New Jersey, begging, like a voice in the wilderness, begging you to change your life. Because God willing... I will return. Yeah, my man. Old Gringo gave me that. It looked just like that emoji. You good job, old Gringo. You're a fire knight. Shout out to all my members. Guys, this is the last call, man. Okay? Because I'll tell you right now, I'm going to die with coconut juice dripping on my body. Don't die in the middle of New Jersey. Okay? Going to shop right. Not good. Change your life, guys. Retire now. I got to take a hydration break. I'll pray we get to the end of these live comments, guys. We've been going two hours strong, man. We've been going two hours strong. I'm on fire now. Spirit of the Lord's in here tonight, man. <laughs> Spirit, what's the gas right now in New Jersey? $1.95 per gallon for regular. Okay. All right, let's continue. Uh, uh, where are we at? Pluto. I love my mom. She passed away. Love to you, brother. 2018, she was an angel from Earth. Love to you, Pluto. I feel I feel that. Roz! 999 Super Chat all the way from South Florida. Our loving Queen Roz, who is closer than ever to retirement. She's a full-time police officer, almost about to collect her pension. She says, hey, Sam, I miss you. I miss you, too. Have a great night. I'm going to bed. Be careful. Long day. We'll love to you. Roz, Roz, real quick, while you're still in here, three steps to retirement. None of them include pension credits, even though I'm happy you're getting them. Get that money back. There's three steps to retirement. Number one is downsize. Roz, you could do that right now if you didn't downsize. Number two is relocate. You're already in Southeast Florida, so you're in a good spot. But you may want to go to a better spot in Southeast Florida. Number three is put your time into things that are focused around your self-care. Roz, I love you. Be safe. She's got two years and four months and counting. I'm counting for you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for Pluto who wants to get down to Fort Lauderdale. I'm praying for Norma's father in a hospital. I'm praying for my brother John going through a divorce. I say an hour father in the morning, I try to think about everyone. Okay, And when I can't think about everyone, I say, Lord, you know what they need? There's a scripture that says you should only pray one time and then give it to the Lord because God knows everything. I'm not going to sit there and ramble for hours. Rick says, in Massachusetts, gas is $1.59 per gallon. Love to you, brother. Thank you again. Thank you, Roz. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, everyone, guys. Love to you, Pluto. Praying for you, brother. Thank you for sharing that about your mother. I think that's one of the painful things you can go through life, losing your mother. So, I know, I've, lo I've already lost a piece of my soul when my dog died. 
I know that I'll lose another piece of my soul when my mom dies. But as I get older, I just accept that as part of the life in this world, I may cry for three years like I did with my dog, but we just keep putting one foot in front of the other. I remember I would go for an evening walk and I, I saw an older guy who lived in my community. And I said, hey man, what was the worst part of life that you ever experienced? And he says, Sam, well, you know, when we had our youngest son, he was born with a learning disability. And it was a huge blow because we wanted the best for our child and we knew that our child would never really be able to develop at a certain level and it was, it killed our dream. I said, well, I see you're happy now and you know, you embrace your son, you love your son, you love your... I go, how'd you get over it? He goes, well, Sam, as you get older in life, what you realize is you do, all you can do is put one foot in front of the other and take life one day at a time. And I carry that message with me when I'm at my lowest points. Because there's been times in my life where I've asked myself, should you just lay down and stop getting up? And sometimes I've thought about that. I have a family member that tries to sleep more of the day than be awake. And I understand why, because it's very painful to be awake when you're not in a good place. But what I've learned is if you stay down, the world keeps kicking you. So for me, I don't judge my family members who try to sleep the day away. But for me, I found my suffering is less when I get up and I keep pushing forward. I suffer more when I stay down. So if you ever have to trick yourself out of a depression, if you ever have to trick yourself out of the bed, if you ever have to trick yourself out of being unemployed and go getting a job, you remember the more you stay down, the more you suffer. And if you have no other desire other than self-preservation, get up. Get up. Even if it's a selfish motive. Nathan, great to see you, brother. Great to see you, Nathan. Love to you, man. He goes, I used to sleep and escape reality. Only made it worse. Damn it, Nathan. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for your membership, but above that, thank you for your comment and thank you for being a fighter. I know it ain't easy. Like, as I get older in life, again, I don't judge people that struggle mentally. I understand. I do. And now I speak very passionately because I got to get myself worked up to go forward. But I don't, I, I, guys, I don't look down on people. Now, I don't, I don't put up with stuff in my own personal space, but there's not a day in my life where I walk by and say, man, I hope that person really gets shit to him, okay? Because that's such negative energy. Now, again, there's times, that's why even like when I talk about politics, I don't, out of my 2,000 videos, a small percentage of them are based on politics or certain, uh, more of it's based on self-care. Okay. Why? Because guys, I'm not consumed with negative energy. Because you need all your energy to get out of bed. And if you don't believe that, to me, you haven't experienced life. Your energy is more important than $1.95 per gallon at a Jersey gas station. Or like Rick said, uh, gas is only $1.59 in Massachusetts. I want to ask everyone right now who isn't falling asleep in the live chat, how much value do you put on your energy? If regular gas in New Jersey is $1.95 per gallon, I want to know how much is your energy worth? Because they're selling it by the gallon right now. Energy matters, guys. It's valuable. It's sold every day. Even when oil was negative $37 a barrel, it's $32 a barrel now, positive. Even when it was negative, it was still profitable as far as how much it was sold in the street. Energy, protecting your energy, rejuvenating your energy is one of the most important aspects of self-care that you'll ever discover. How do you protect your energy? Only healthy relationships. And if you can't find any healthy relationships, you got to learn how to be single. You got to learn how to walk a level of your journey alone. Now, some people will never do that. And that's why they always have low energy, bad energy. Okay. Energy is the difference between crawling under the covers 
for another hour and getting up and going to Starbucks and starting your day. Energy. Self-care is like the Toyota Prius. When the Toyota Prius breaks, it regenerates energy. It's constantly taking care of itself to be efficient and effective. A dual diesel pickup truck that isn't hauling anything is wasting a lot of energy. A Dodge Charger Hellcat is a waste of energy. You better value your energy, man. You better be efficient and effective in your life. That's why the first step to retiring now is downsizing. That's all about conserving your energy to focusing on things that matter to you. If you got a storage unit, you got wasted energy. You got wasted money. You got wasted stuff. You got Jay Leno collections. Tom, I think he, yeah, he gave the uh, uh, wasted, uh, like a uh, big rig truck or something like that with thumbs down. I'm with you, Tom. All right, guys, let's take a hydration break. I love you. I love you, Milano. Man, we're fire tonight, guys. Thank you very much, guys. Norma. Hey, Josh, I'm good. How about you? Thurston, Sleepy Joe. Yep, but, uh, but to me, I understand that Joe's sleepy, but right now, we could say devastating Don because we got 36 million Americans unemployed. Donald Trump knew about it in January. So if he was... If Donald Trump was responsible for all-time high stock market and all-time low unemployment, then he's responsible for all-time high unemployment. So I think it's a disgrace to this country that our two best choices for president are Donald Trump or Sleepy Joe. But I'll vote, and then I'll, I'll, it's like a prayer. I say a prayer, I give it to the Lord, and then I do the work of my life. So, that's how I look at politics. That's how I look at life. Okay? Good job. Josh. Uh, Pluto, sorry to hear that. She is in a better place now. It's tough to, it's tough to hear that. It's tough to say that. You're right. Uh, it's just a tough part of life, losing people. Uh, Al Noyce, the person you see in the mirror is responsible to take care of you. We all need help. I never want you to feel ashamed about needing help. I want you to seek help. When I went to a church, it wasn't about religion. It was about seeking a support system to help me be confident enough to separate from friends in an environment. Now, I didn't stay in the church. I stayed in the church for 10 years, but I left the church because there's a certain point where the bird has to fly. You, you can't just have faith. You have to have work. So, you have to get to a point that if you go to therapy, if you go to a support system, you're, you take those tools and you apply them to self-care. If you don't, you're in a vicious cycle of self-medication. And I don't want that for myself, and I damn sure don't want that for you guys. No. Glad you are better, Thurston. Thurston, I'm not better than anyone. Uh, Frank? Do you smoke cigars? No. When I first stopped smoking cigarettes, I, I smoked black and milds, which are like cigars, and even some cigars. But eventually, I just quit that too because I, I just didn't want that lifestyle. Uh, Tom, thumb up on storage units. I love you, brother. Thurston, storage units are ill. Wow. Agreed. In my opinion, again, if you have a business or if you just disagree with me, guys, these are my opinions. I feel that for me, I have some evidence in things I've seen in my life, but these are, remember that part of my videos, some is fact, some is fiction, some may be like, you know, whatever, and some is opinion, and some is the realest shit you ever heard, you know, it's all, it's all those things, okay? You have to take the good from it, leave the bad, and then figure out your own life. Thank you, Blue Jeans. I, I, I don't... I don't say in my videos, put me on a pedestal. I, I, guys, I block more people than I tell to subscribe to my channel or join my memberships. So yes, YouTube is a side hustle. Yes, I would like to get compensated for my time, but no, I'm not selling my soul. Okay. I'm devoting a certain amount of time and energy 
to something I enjoy doing it, trying to make some money, but giving you some advice that's wholesome. Because out of all the things I'm saying, if you if you strip down all the different aspects of it, it's a wholesome message of self-care, simplification, and self-accountability. I mean, if you don't like that, I mean, I can understand this. There's, there's some people that don't like if I gain five pounds. I don't give a fuck. Okay. So you got to figure a certain part of your life out on your own. That's true. Uh, no, I hate to leave this great chat. We love you, Norman. Thank you for your graciousness. But I got to go. Love to you. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you. And praying for your situation. Love and respect. Same back to you. And everyone in here, appreciate those positive and loving vibes, Norman. Al Noise. Your choice of food can either cure or make you sick. That's true. And again, my mom struggles with food. She'll probably never eat healthy. And I still love my mom. I'll never judge my mom. You know, I used to get a point where I tell my mom, like, I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to allow you to eat unhealthy. I'm not going to buy you food. But guys, my mom's 73 year old. She got diabetes. She could barely walk. I'm not going to snatch the chicken filet out of my mom's mouth. What am I going to do? I'm going to sit with her. I'm going to listen to her and I'm going to love her. However, when I had to get out of obesity, I had a big argument with my mom. I said, look, I ain't eating this shit no more. And when I come over, you either have to respect my choices or I ain't coming over. And now, now some of the overweight women that watch me don't like when I get rough. But I tell you right now, if you're a son, respect your mom, but you respect yourself. Okay. And if your mom is trying to express her love through unhealthy food and you want to change your life, you have to be willing to stand up for yourself in a loving, respectful way. And if your father is trying to control you with inheritance, cut him off and get a job and never talk to him. There's a part of your life that is defined by your fingerprint. What does your fingerprint mean? It means that your child is not a mini you. It's not a mini me. You have a different fingerprint than your parents. What does that mean? That means there's part of your life that's individual. And you have to figure out what that means. I can't answer that. Your therapist can't answer that. I, your therapist, and other people can give you tools, insights to inspire and direct you, but you got to go on your own journey. You know, that's that's part of your best life, guys. It's part, definitely a part of retired life. Figure it out before you die. Thurston, great architect condemned garages um look i had a garage when i had a townhome okay it has a level of value but i sold my townhouse lived without a garage for three years and for me garage has no purpose I know people unemployed, they have a garage, their car sits in their garage, they don't door dash, and they're trying to figure out how to retire early. Sell the garage, get your car out of the garage, go door dash, you can retire now. Never listen to an old quote if it doesn't make sense right now. Guys, remember, old quotes are just old people. Some of them good, some of them bad. Some of them are, are Donald Trump supporters, they're watching me, and they give a thumbs down when they don't like when I say, fuck you, okay? And guys, if you don't like this channel, kick rocks. Okay. If I pay more attention to you than your children, guys, there's not enough thumbs down in this world that's going to make me like you. Okay. You're an emotional abuser. You're a sarcastic, nasty person. I don't like you. Your children don't like you. I damn sure don't want to retire with you. Kick rocks. If you speak up again, you'll be blocked. There are boundaries in my life. That can never be measured by a thumbs up, thumbs down ratio. Okay? Analytics don't run my life. Emotional abusers damn sure don't. Never forget it. <sighs> don't fake the funk. Okay, we're getting there. Josh, laughing no man. I got the perfect combination for someone to date someone who wears leopard clothing. Hello, kitty. The journal loves scary movies, has a storage unit. Total disaster. <laughs> BBT, Sam, I knew a guy who opened a moving company for a Buddhist. He starved to death. BBT is a comedian. Love to you, brothers. Great to have you. Donatello was my favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. 
Tom, I love you, brother. Drop the bike. Custom emoji from my member. Back to work. I'll catch the replay. Tom is an auto mechanic who is working and therefore his dream is working. Because if you don't work, your dream don't work. Tom, even though he's working, he's retired now. He's downsized. He's The only part, he's on step two. Relocating to where he wants to live. He's trying to figure that out and he can. Because he's flexible. He's downsized. And the final part of his equation will be pouring his energy into things that interest him. Good job, brother. Thank you for your support. Josh, bye, Nomad. Bye, Norma. Sorry. Blue jeans. My hubby and I would like to be snowbirds and move to Florida later. Don't buy property in Florida until you lived in Florida for a year. Don't live in another state. Get seduced by Florida. Buy a property in Florida. Say, that's our retirement home. And waste. never have two properties. Never. Don't move to Florida until you visited Florida several times. Don't buy property in Florida until you lived in Florida for at least a year and a half. That's my advice to anyone out there. Never forget it. Love to you. Uh, blue jeans. Thank you. BBT. A joke. Buddhist has no possessions. Well, either do I. I got no underwear. I get the joke. Oh, Gringo. I live in Kansas City. Shout out to the Chiefs for now, but I miss the mountains in the West. Also, instead of ions in the Atlantic Ocean, we have, oh, I never heard of that, Vortex in the Prescott, Arizona sacred vibe zone to recharge one's soul. Well, okay. I never heard of the Vortex. I have to look it up. Triple O. Uh, you always have food and shelter in America. You're damn right. And you always have food and shelter in prison. That's true. I visited people in prison. I did pr prison ministry. So I've seen people in prison. I've worked with them. I've seen people in homeless shelters. I've worked with them. I have family members that are all those things. Guys, your life is what you want to make it. Okay. I'm not impressed by a lot of the stories because I've seen a lot of stories. It's only by the grace of God any of us are saved. I don't take pride in doing good or I take I take hard luck stories with a grain of salt. Because if you're willing to put a little work, a little effort, a little creativity in your life, you can live a great life. But it's going to take some work. Never forget it. Do you want to be in one of the same levels as an inmate in prison? I've already seen it. Okay? Already seen it. Already seen prisons. Already seen homeless shelters. And what I can tell you is, guys, your dreams don't work if you don't work. Never forget it. And I know some people who thrive in prisons. I know some people who thrive in rehabilitation centers. I know some people who thrive in subsidized housing. They like that environment better than what we like or what you may like or may not like. So don't think that someone in prison, some people like to be there. You may not understand that. You may not, but you may have not never been there either. You may not understand that some people actually like to be destitute in a subsidized hotel room. You may not understand that, but you may not never have a failed. Guys, a lot of people have never experienced life. Okay. They're sitting in a place inside their house. They never leave their house. Well, I can tell you guys, whole nother world out there. BBT laughing. Josh, Sam is on fire tonight, doing the best I can. A storage unit is a graveyard for stuff you don't use. That's the truth. Love to you, brother. Old Dur uh, Durango. Do you want to spend time with them? Yeah, drop the mic. Custom emojis from only the members can get that. Thank you, brother. <laughs> I don't want to spend time with them. Uh, Illinois, self-care equals self-respect. You're damn right. I say to myself, Sam, I'm never going to raise my voice in a live chat again. But there's always people that test your boundaries. And it's not about raising your voice, but you have to let people know that, look, I'm not going on a merry-go-round with you. I'm not your therapist. I'm not responsible for your happiness. You want to play that game, that emotional abuser game, ain't going to work. Okay? So, guys, downsize so you don't have to take shit. Go out there, earn your income so you don't have to pander to the assholes. And live your best life. Good job. Peppa Pig. Hey, Peppa. Hello, Sam. Less is more. You're damn right. I live by that. It saved my life. Peppa Pig, I love you and I appreciate you. You nailed it. Uh, dancing emoji. Blue jeans, my garden is taking off. Rain today. Yeah, they say you need rain for a garden. And uh, tropical Florida is does have a rainy season. From June till October is rainy season. 
Never buy a house in Florida till you lived in Florida during rainy season. Rent first, nomad first. The only time you don't want to be in Florida is August and September. High to humidity, high to hurricane season. If you have air conditioning, you'll, you'll be all right. And if you're able to evacuate, you'll be all right. But your home insurance will be high. I hope you're still in here, Blue Jeans. I looked at a tiny house, 500 square foot. The home insurance was $5,000 a year. Property taxes are low in Florida. No state income tax, but home insurance high. Why? Because you live in a tropical environment. What does that mean? Hurricanes. Okay. There's some entitled Floridians that are assholes. Okay. The drivers in Florida are wild. Car insurance, some of the highest in the country. However, Florida is my favorite state. Why? Climate and culture. But there's a big difference between Ocala, Florida and Palm Beach County. So blue jeans. A home in Florida will not give you the Florida lifestyle. The Florida lifestyle is sun, fun, and activity. None of them include a home. We are tricked by real estate agents, by marketing and advertising, by a poster card that has a palm tree on it saying this is retirement haven. I saw a documentary on Lehigh Acres. It's some shitty part of Southwest Florida where scam artists sold cheap land and says you want to buy land in Florida. It's the retirement capital of the world. The land was in the middle of nowhere and it's not even tropical Florida. The idea of moving to Florida, especially when you live in Michigan, and I understand because I live in New Jersey, is I'll take any part of Florida. Guys, you don't want any part of Florida. That's like, that's like going on a blind date. Okay. That's like going to a brothel and say, I'll take any big chick that comes out of the back. Nope, don't want it. Every part of Florida is not tropical paradise. Parts of Florida are meth heaven. Parts of Florida are crime capitals of the world. Parts of Florida will make you think Michigan wasn't that bad. But you won't know that until you go and you visit and explore. And you stop listening to the real estate agents. You stop listening to the people on YouTube. And you do some individual searching. But no matter how you move, I still think you should move to Florida. But you should do this first. You should downsize first. Liquidate your assets. Don't buy a house in Florida before you sell your house in Michigan. You should rent on a short-term basis, no more than a year max. A vacation in Destin, Florida is different than living in Destin, Florida. It's different than living outside of Destin, Florida. A vacation in Disney World is different than living outside of Disney World. I don't want to scare you. I want to encourage you. One of the best things I did was relocate my life to Florida. I think you're on the right path. But I want to encourage you to put a little effort, a little time, a little creativity and lack of commitment initially, lack of commitment initially into Florida. Why? Because I want you to sustain the Florida lifestyle. I don't want you to get seduced into the Florida. I want you to sustain it. Date Florida for a little bit. Date Florida. Would you marry someone you never dated? Like blue jeans, you may actually want to move down to Florida, but you probably may want to get divorced too. Okay? You may think moving to Florida will save your marriage. It won't. It'll just make it more human with a marriage you don't like. Well, I'm not trying to cause a divorce. I'm trying to tell you date first. Don't commit until you know your partner. Relocation is part of retirement. But to relocate properly and healthy, you have to live in different areas until you find where and if you want to anchor down. Because retirement has nothing to do with a house. Retirement has nothing to do with home decor. If you think you can buy a pillow that says love is in this home, 
but you want to divorce your spouse, you don't realize what the retirement life is. Love, love is self-care out the wazoo. And being married 35 years don't mean anything to me because we had a guy in here last night, he'd been married 20 years and he wants to, he on the verge of suicide. I know people have been married 35 years and they just did it or they're just staying with it because they come from a generation where women didn't have equal rights and it's too late to get a divorce now and they're uninspired and they don't want to be a caretaker when their spouse gets old and sick. So I'm happy that you're married for 35 years, but I've been on YouTube for three years and that don't mean shit. Okay. I, I remember when I first started going to a church, I wanted to change some shit. And I remember people say, Sam, I've been to church for five years. You, can, you, know, you can't just change. Don't be entitled. I don't care if you've been married for 35 years or 35 minutes. You're not entitled to tomorrow. You're not entitled to anything good. You got to do always self-care. Self-care is the pathway to relocation. Because if you're not taking care of yourself in Michigan, if you're overweight and you think Florida will get you in shape, you're going to destroy your life. If you and your husband are overweight, you don't, you don't, you're not active, you're not taking care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, Florida will destroy your life. I've seen it happen. I care about you enough to tell you, start right where you are and start with self-care. Right now in Michigan, it's starting to be the spring. You should be walking every day. If you're not walking right now, Florida's going to destroy your life. You're going to end up in a nursing home in Florida and God forbid you get the coronavirus. I don't want that to happen to you. You're going to be taking hydroxychloroquine like Trump. I love you, blue jeans. I love your family. I say this not to hurt you, but like Mecca said, the blows of a friend can be trusted. Okay. However, I love you. Let's continue. All right. All right, guys, we're on fire now. I hope I can get all these live comments. Uh, BBT, smoking cures cancer. Well, you know it doesn't. Uh, Laura, I love Chipotle. Well, I'm not mad at you. Just be careful. Josh, laughing. No, man, that's a new one. What do you hate about Chipotle? Uh, basically, kills your arteries. Uh, it's oversaturated fat. It's sloppy uh, Spanish food. And it's basically uh, a dirty-ass taco uh, wrapped in, in rich flour. But, hey, it's the number one DoorDash delivery restaurant, so keep eating. BBD. My neighbor's sister married uh, Schmidt. What does that mean? Uh, BBT. Dodge Chargers are an indication of ESP. I don't know what that means, but in my experience, anyone who drives a Dodge Charger is basically demonically disturbed. Uh, Chris, the stuff. You sure are wise, young man. Thank you uh, uh, graciously for your gracious comment. Wish I had known this when I was younger. We all make mistakes, and so do I. Uh, don't acquire things. Not easy. I failed. Uh, they weigh you down. That's true. We learn as we go. Thank you for your kind, encouraging comment. LA woman. Damn. Well, I got some leopard skin leggings. Well, I would never date you. My mom got leopard skin clothing. She got divorced. Guys. I love you. I won't date you. <laughs> BBT. LA woman, cat woman, this Batman. Do you read me? Guys, if a guy has Superman underwear, I wouldn't date him. Okay. I got to keep it real for everyone out there. L.A. woman, BBT's laughing. Vlad, intellectual property. Oh, yeah. Good to see you. L.A. Uh, Lada. Somebody put sign on driveway. Trump, I will burn it. Bomb fire. Uh, will make me happy. Well, I'm not mad at you. Just don't get arrested for arson. Tom, I'm back rainy like crazy here. I know that's crazy. I saw that video about the rain, man. You got to get down to Florida, man. Soon. Well, it's going to be summer soon. Hang in there, man. L.A. woman. Oh, shit. Slim fast. You remember that? Uh, Jason, what's up, man? That's funny. Good. Good to laugh. BBT. Someone told me that Oprah has a cereal bowl with a lifeguard stand on it. She probably does. Oprah was too insecure to beat Donald Trump. Remember when Oprah had a shot to be the president? And then she did one interview a week after Donald Trump and it got into office. Donald Trump attacked her once and she crawled back into her couch. Guys. Oprah has low self-esteem. She's a billionaire with low self-esteem, okay? So what does that mean? Does that mean Oprah is the devil? No, but it means don't take her Weight Watcher advice. She got low self-esteem, okay? What should you do? Stop eating Chipotle. Stop eating all that bread. Okay, don't do the keto diet, uh, Ellie woman. Remember Dylan Mill? Oh, yeah. Richard Simmons, I remember that guy. 
Sold them. I bought it. Hey, I appreciate you being honest. Nathan, I haven't had Chick-fil-A in a few months. You're doing the right thing. BBT. Dancing with the oldies. Richard was the man. Damn sure right. LA woman. Yes, sweating to the oldies. I remember that. BBT, yep. Uh, old Gringo. Uh, hydroxychloroquine. Yeah, they, 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 that's what Trump taking. I was surprised when I heard it. He said he ain't got the coronavirus, but I think he's lying, man. I think he got it. But he's okay he's drinking hydroxychloroquine. He's drinking hydroxychloroquine like all the big chicks was drinking Slim Fast. That's true. Like, I got to put on my car, guys. I got to run my defrosters. Uh, I take Rod around 20 minutes less. I take iPod. Yep, there you go. Self-care, full-time job. Uh, BBT, not a fan of Leno. Nothing good on TV since Captain Kangaroo retired. Hey, guys, I hear that. Uh, love to you, BBT. I'm going to dream about leopard skins tonight. Well, hey, don't forget your sock. Damn it, LA woman. I'm not mad at that. BBT. Uh, thinking about my great aunt today, love. Uh, LA woman's laughing, BBT. Old gringo smelled the quirf. Oh, a queefing? Yeah, if you queef, I, well, yeah, that's when you make that, uh, when the pussy farts. Yeah, when it's too much air in there. Uh, Rick, 20 super chat. Thank you, man. I uh, appreciate you, brother. I know I read that, Ray, but thank you, man. Blue G's laughing. I love you. I hope you still love me after I got a little rough on self-care. Uh, BBT. Nice, Rick. Carlos, I'm on Friday night. Love to South Florida. Rick, uh, thumbs up. Mecca. Good response, Sam. I love you, Mecca. You're smart. Excellent content. I love and appreciate you also. And dialogue as always. I appreciate you. Thank you for including me. Thank you for being part of a great conversation. Uh, old Gringo Truth. Yeah, fire emoji. Thank you. Old Gringo. Uh, like a... A con oh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the horn emoji. Thank you, man. Red pill. Wow, I love to you, red pill. BBT, chauffeur, Sam. Uh, what? I know Queef. Well, Queef is when the pussy fart, right? Red pill, laughing. Josh, you know, man, that horn is called. Oh, it's a chauffeur. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's what that's called. <laughs> All right, I got a little ball of track. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, it's in Hebrew, it means, uh, <laughs> oh no, Josh says, yeah, the chauffeur used to do it at the old church, oh, okay, and Old Gringo says in Hebrew, they called the chauffeur, it's a ra ram's horn, yeah, like the St. Louis Rams, exactly, that's what it was like, Josh, funny the pastor had people blowing chauffeurs, uh, but he also loved to collect money, hey guys, we live in a capitalist society, man, Ross, I love you, I know I read that already, Ross, I don't know if you're still listening, but shout out to all my police officers in Southeast Florida, Get those pension credits. Retire early. BBT. I had a chauffeur in my Dodge Ram. Oh, man. It's like the devil. Devil driving. I don't know, let's say positive. Uh, old Ringo. Uh, well, no, I do like some of the Dodge Rams because I like the Corrado Axion that's on a Dodge Ram Promaster 1500. So when I say the devil, I, sometimes I only think about the Hellcat. But you're right. Old Ringo. It's, yeah, 149 uh, for regular gasoline in Kansas City. BBT. Good night, Ross. Roz, be safe. We love you, Roz. Keep counting those uh, pension credits off. Every time you get discouraged, keep making that money back. Red pill. I can see you in Florida. Yeah, I'll blow that horn in Florida. Now in horn one. Yeah, coconut oil. On. Damn it, red pill. That's exactly what I plan to do when I get back there. I'm going to buy me a horn. I'm going to get me some coconut juice. And it's going to get popping. Rick S, $1.59 here in Massachusetts. Love to that. Thank you, Rick. Oh, gringo. I went to Shabbat in boot camp. Uh, I'm just looking at some cops driving up. I went to Shabbat in boot camp. Uh, and after that, also went to Hebrew school. Oh, okay. Roz, I have a tiny home. 180 square feet, you downsized. On a trailer, I'm already off. Roz, Roz for the win. Good job. Oh, gringo. Lots of Masonic Jews in San Diego, California. I've never been there. Roz, oh, sorry for your loss. I agree. Bluetooth fire. Old Gringo, when I held the Torah, it was like an electric torch. I'm not mad at you. Old Gringo, but these days, I keep it simple. I believe in that. I believe in God. I like that. I pray quietly. I like that. In the corner, I like that. Away from everyone. 100 emoji. Nathan, I used to sleep in escape reality. Only made it worse. I remember that comment. Great comment, Nathan. That was a great comment tonight. Uh, Blue jeans. Yep, my brother sleeps a lot. I know. You can't change him. You just got to accept him and move on with your life. LA woman, and reach out for help. Therapy saved my life. Yep, but do the whole work of your life because you know damn well you can reach out for Slim Fast, but you also got to you gotta reach out for an apple and an orange once in a while. Good job. Rob, I waste my energy want to be more organized. Well, just by saying that, guys, what's part of therapy is stand up, say who you are, and admit your problem. 
So you took the first step tonight. Rob, taking accountability, first step to growth. Good job. Al Noyce, energy and passion helps you create more successful life. Al Noyce, you figured out life. Tom, yeah, give me the, uh, like, waste of energy, thumbs down emoji. Good job. Old Gringo, the task was all faced as a human beings. Yes, the task we face is to find and become who we are. Great comment. Rick, the virus, all caps, cannot be blamed on any one person. And it is something that none of us have ever had to confront. Yes, some mistakes were made. Nobody is perfect. No perfect answers. Uh, I'm not mad at that. Love to you, brother. Uh, Blue Jeans, glad I found your channel. I appreciate that. Tom, tell him, Sam, did the best I can. Old Gringo, got to run, working overnight tonight. Damn it, old Gringo, secure the bag. Right. Was the hardest thing to get rid of Sam? Uh, what was the hardest thing to get rid of? Hope you are doing well. Love to you, brother. Thank you. Uh, brand new underwear with the tag on it. That, that's truth. I remember standing in my closet with brand new underwear and brand new clothes with the tag on it. For some reason, I would throw them in the plastic bag trash, and then I'd pick them back up. I don't know why. Clothes. Blue jeans, thank you. Blue jeans, I'm still here. Love to you. Blue jeans, get out of Michigan. I love you. Just do it the right way. Blue jeans, we vacation here. Love to you. I got a viewer from uh, the west coast of Florida by Dustin. She, she makes videos. Her name is Showgirls. Uh, blue jeans. Yep, my friend was with someone for 28 years. They broke up. Yeah, you see, you know the truth. You're very honest. I like you. Blue jeans, thumbs up. Thank you. Carlos, great show. Love to South Florida. I love you, brother. All right, guys. I poured out everything I could. It was the grace of God. I can't take full credit. Thank you for your great comments. Thank you for all the super chat love. Thank you for all my members. If you're not a member, you want to be a member, click that blue join. If you don't want to do that, just click the thumbs up. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless.